Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engines running. Lift off. We have a liftoff. Up only. Hello and welcome to Up Only. TV. I'm Ledger. We're going to introduce our guests here in a minute. Kobe's here, of course. Before we get to that, I want to let you know all about Blockfolio. Go to uponly.tv slash Blockfolio. They are our partner for this and all episodes of Up Only. You can trade seamlessly from one asset to the other. It's a completely mobile trading experience. If you want to go from Dogecoin to ETH or Solana, Whatever fits your fancy, you can do it on Blockfolio at uponly.tv slash Blockfolio. Tell them Uponly sits you in the settings. It's a great app, fully powered by FTX Books. It's a great experience. Download it on the App Store today. Thanks to Blockfolio for being our partner. Kobe, hello. Hello, mate. How, How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm not too bad. I've already got my chart open to see if the down only curse continues. Every time we stream, the market completely dumps. It's not related to the market makers being on this call. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, today we've got uh, Carly. How are you doing, Carly? Good. How are you? I am surviving. And we've got legendary hacker Bryce, Whitey Cracker. How are you doing, Bryce? Doing fantastic. And we are just going to talk about nothing for the next Whoa. <laughs> hour or so. We're going to talk about everything. Um, we got all the stuff see, to talk about. <laughs> see what comes up. Um, Brian, how are you doing? What's been going on in your day? You've been having a bit of a technical nightmare. That's why we're 15 minutes late. You know, the, the Twitter universe shamed me into cable management for my desk. And then when I did it and I was like getting under there, getting all the cables organized, my ass bumped into the fiber and knocked out my internet for a day and a half so no good deed goes unpunished uh <laughs> and meanwhile there's i'm in alabama and there's like tornadoes here today there's all kinds of fun stuff so you know what i'm just cracking a beer just gonna crack a beer drink a beer it's gonna be great we're, we're talking to yeah. carly chicken and and yt cracker what could go wrong <laughs> yeah what can go wrong so i first thing i want to know is how long each of you have independently been in crypto for? Because Carly, I saw you tweet about crypto like, I don't know how long ago, um, a couple of years ago probably. And obviously Mr. Robot had a, like a large sort of uh, crypto theme throughout it. Like how long have you been in the game? Are you holding like mad bags? I wish. My friend, I am in a, I have a group chat that's called Crypto Carly. And it's with three of my guy friends um who just love to like school me on crypto and yell at me about the fact that i didn't buy when they told me to buy um <laughs> and so it's basically just me being like shamed all the time <laughs> it's pretty much what it is <laughs> oh no shamed every day all right day. well you didn't even buy last year i saw you tweet about crypto in like march last year at the absolute bottom no because i'm an idiot what right. can I say? Maybe the group chat has just if moved here. This there, is the shaming call. If anyone out there wants to like give me some, then I'll take it. <laughs> All right. So if anyone in the chat wants to hand over um, some crypto, there's your there's your welcome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Bryce, what about you? You wrote a song called Bitcoin Baron like five years ago or something. Uh, how long you been in the game? Oh, it was that song came out in 2013. Uh, but yeah, I've been in since 2012, I think was when I first acquired, I, I mean, it was kind of in the crypto cypherpunk circles for a minute. Um, are but, you one uh, of the people in Carly's group chat shaming her? I am not. Time? Yeah. <laughs> I, I try not to crypto shame, uh, too hard uh, anyway. So I'd probably be useless there, but, uh, yeah, I've always just, the technology just made a lot of sense to me um when i first kind of was exposed to it so uh yeah i've just been a huge i'm i'm more a proponent of the technology i'm not like a finance bro or anything like that so tech the are you in it for the tech in it for the tech baby <laughs> in that way i'm jealous yeah 2012 was when i first talked about bitcoin publicly and i looked back at it and it was seven dollars like right before it broke up and just went you know, Omega Moon to like a hundred dollars, but I didn't do anything at the time. I just completely ignored it. So, 
Me and Carly over here are feeling oh. feeling very poor for not being they, in 2012, 2013 poor. like you guys. They when did you actually get in Ledger? Uh, my first Bitcoin was bought in 2017. I'm a retail pleb. That's just like you tell all our hedge fund guests when they come on. <laughs> hey, welcome to the welcome to Thunderdome. Well, so 2012, Bryce, you've seen it like properly. You've seen like all the weird stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and like I, I, a lot of the like older school um, Bitcoin people and stuff. I mean, we used to have these meetups, and it was like 20 of us in a coffee shop, and uh, you know, just talking about oh, it's gonna change the world. And I remember I used to talk to people, <laughs> and it probably seemed just super culty, like because I'd just be like, you heard of this Bitcoin thing? And then I just imagine those people like now retrospectively like thinking about when some guy, random guy, was just evangelizing to them. But uh, yeah, that's why like like even the GameStop frenzy, like watching that and stuff. Uh, it's just, it's very just easy to hold through these types of periods. Cause um, yeah, you just, you've seen everything. Uh, it's the wild west. So it's nuts. You know what I feel bad for more than I feel bad for myself are the people <laughs> who like bought a bunch of Bitcoin when it was nothing and then like lost their password <laughs> and now can't get into their account and have like tens of millions of dollars. So there's, there's a dude in the UK who uh, like threw out his hard drive or something. Um, and it had like 2000 Bitcoin on it, uh, which in the last, last cycle was worth quite a lot. In this cycle is like ridiculous amounts of money. Um, and I think in 2017, he started like uh, this campaign to raise money so he could excavate the landfill Absolutely. where he believes his hard drive is. Like, how do you deal with that emotionally? Well, so yeah. like, it's the same thing. Like, I try to tell people it's like baseball cards. Like at, at a certain point, people didn't think that they were going to be worth any money. And so they threw them out. And so it took them out of circulation. So, I mean, the reason that the oldest baseball cards are worth the most is for the same reason. It's scarcity. So like... I thank them for their sacrifice by taking those coins out of circulation. But I think everyone has a story about some sort of crypto lint wallet that they forgot the password to or mined for a week and threw away their hard drive. I mean, there was faucets that used to just give 50 Bitcoin away type thing. Um, and yeah, no more of that. So uh, yeah. Bri they Bri never would have held that whole time. Like very few people held that whole time. Yeah, I also think that if you were one of those people and you knew you lost your um, your keys or whatever, you'd probably rebuy along the way, or at least I hope so. Because um, I like I made several terrible trades years ago. I found a tweet the other day from 2014 where I lost a thousand Bitcoin. And at the time, it was like 200 grand, and like now it's significantly more money. Um, but like, like I you know I was exposed to the market the whole way, so it didn't matter so much. Um, Bryce, I get a few of them. You must get a lot as well, where people like come saying, I kind of know my password, but not quite know my password. Can you like recover it? You can have like half. Yeah, there's a there's a dude who's pretty good at that. Um, and he's honest. Uh, but a lot of it, I mean, now, like yeah, people have sort of partial passwords. If you have a cracking rig, or if you have a mining rig, you can actually repurpose it as a cracking rig. But uh, like Hashcat now um, has a lot of wallet recovery zones um but generally yeah it's one of those things where they they pick their password when they were drunk and so they need to get drunk to remember it again uh <laughs> get in that frame of mind uh there's yeah there's a ton of that but by and large more i'd say that people like again formatted their hard drive or something and that's the those are just they're just going i heard of another one where somebody had like they have one of the self-destruct wallets so they get 10 guesses and they have to remember this password and they've got like three guesses left. So it's just I saw that that's that, that hard drive. I think I think that there is a way to get around that because it's, it's part of the hard drive firmware. Um, I, that if you had somebody with requisite knowledge to soldering and stuff, I think you could get it bypass that uh, that lockout feature. But, yeah, that was a hard drive, I think. And uh, yeah, it's like the monkey's paw. His wishes are just slowly <laughs> yeah. disappearing. I feel like that's like the most suspenseful movie ever is like watching someone with three chances left to guess their password. Oh yeah. <laughs> hmm. I did that the other day. I got an old, old, um, old ledger, uh, uh, hardware wallet. And it said, you've got three attempts to guess your pin. And I was like, you know what? 
I don't think there's anything on here. I think it's empty. So I'm just going to do it. And I did it. And then it, I burned the burned the thing. It was gone. And I was like, so you now I have hope there was nothing on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's no way there was back. nothing on there. I don't think there was. It was just like in a, in a box somewhere. Um, Carly, on uh, Mr. Robot, because there was such a, uh, you know, um, deeply technical uh, storyline. Did you have a bunch of people on uh, on the crew who were like super like ex hackers or crypto people? Um, yeah, so like supporting had, the writers. We had like tech experts because um, everything like that we did is possible to do. Like it's all real. Every like code that was written or shown, like it's all real. So one of our writers was like a coder and then I remember like in the beginning right after we did the pilot we had this like lecture by this hacker I can't even remember who but who kind of was like explaining to us the mindset of it and you know was like okay give me 12 ways to turn on a light bulb um and so we all were like turn it off like unplug it take the light bulb out and then you kind of are like run out of answers and he's like get creative and so he's like you know put a blanket over the light and like blah 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 but he's like that's getting from point a to point b like how can you get there um and then we also but we had people on set who would was like programming all the computers and one of them was a woman roxanne she was the best go roxanne um, yeah but yeah, so everything was like super accurate and I would always uh, ask them about everything. I, I just like to imagine there was like a crypto Twitter person on the like crypto team being like, right, this is the <laughs> way Bitcoin works. And now now they're like uh, trading shit coins and they've got like a Pepe frog avatar. Um, that's what that's what's happening in my head. And you can't take it. Uh, you can't take it away from me. Um, that's what you like. You. You did like a legit airdrop in the show, right? You like airdropped ecoin on everybody in the fucking world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> back in back in 2013, Bryce, was it 2013 or oh, maybe 2014? Do you remember when uh, Aurora Coin was doing an airdrop to all of Iceland? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, what? That was the that was the worst. There was a section of crypto where um, people just started making coins named after countries. So there was like Asia coin, there was Aurora coin, which was Iceland's coin. Um, and the, the developer said he was going to airdrop like one Aurora coin to every single person in Iceland or something. And then I think the government shut them down and he tried to exit scam or something. I can't remember. Um, but there was several of them. There was one like every every place you can imagine. People just made a coin for it. It was like, we're gonna, it's going to be the currency of this place. place yeah. Surprisingly, none of them were. But yeah, so. This is a little bit of trivia, and I think my answer is correct. But do y'all know which TV show was the first to mention Bitcoin? No idea. No, no idea. ESI Miami. Nope. I was going to say NCIS. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, chat is saying Silicon Valley. Nope. I, I think uh, so. Right. The Simpsons. Everybody, everybody's used their guesses. You're not going to get it because if you don't know right off, you're not going to get it. It was The Good Wife, and it was in like 2013. Wow. What's The Good Wife? Uh, it's like a American lawyer drama kind of thing. How did they bring it up? I don't. Re I really don't remember. Uh, I'll have to check it out. Here's a, there's a Wired story about it from 2013. I will. Is that I, how you first heard about Bitcoin? I, I definitely heard it on that on that show, but not until whenever I watched it, like in some other year. Dadgummit. Wait, so you were catching up on The Good Wife? Yeah, we watched the, you know what, like, so it's, it's hard to find shows that your whole family wants to watch sometimes. I can't find it because Wired is completely locking me, but um, yeah, sometimes it's hard to find uh, shows that everybody enjoys. Like, I love Mr. Robot, but uh my wife doesn't like intense shows so like i have to watch it by myself <laughs> so it's like i'm currently on maybe season two or something <laughs> like because i watch it like one a random saturday here or there i'll watch a couple episodes catch up wait so, you haven't finished the whole show no it's gonna take me forever man i got two kids i got a wife like sneaking in time to watch your own tv 
Like I watch one episode of Peaky Blinders like every three months. <laughs> like it's just not easy. It's not easy, Kobe. I think it's a very good show until season four where it like transcends and becomes like one of the best shows ever. Wow. Season four is glorious. Yeah, it was it was glorious. Like the the season four is like like it's, I won't ruin it for you, mate. I won't ruin it for you. I appreciate. <laughs> I feel it. like you should have at least caught up and watched the two final seasons in in like sort of research. I'm really good at like not getting the spoilers on TV shows because. Like, I'll watch them years later. Um, so don't screw it for me, chat. I'm not going to look at you. Don't spoil anything. <laughs> you know, I always spoil it for myself because I start watching something, then I get impatient, and I just read the plot on Wikipedia. And I'm like, Do I still want to watch this? No, nah, I know what happens now, and then I move on. I've ruined every show I've ever enjoyed by doing this, I think. <laughs> Why? I don't know. I get like I get, like... A mixture of like impatient and a bit anxious and if the plot's like I don't really like where it's going I'm just gonna check it's good and I'm like oh <laughs> never mind I know what happens now I'll watch something else um, <laughs> when you um when you got involved with Mr. Robot did you know it was gonna be like as good as it was did you know it was like this is gonna be hype I read the pilot and you know they were like oh it's this USA show which has always been like sorry USA shit TV um, <laughs> so I was just like okay you know how good can this be and I like literally remember reading the pilot and just closing my computer and being like holy fuck what did I just read <laughs> and then um we were doing the pilot and we were I knew it was something special because it's just so special but we were all like oh I hope it gets picked up I don't know and then we did, and then I think they released the pilot early and people, it got like a million views or something and people started writing about it and being like, this is really cool. And then that's when we were kind of like, what? But we were just expecting like a few people to watch it, you know? And then it just like caught on because we were one of the first shows that was like good TV, I feel like. Um, and like cinematic and yeah, that was like was USA awesome. and FX both kind of came on board and were like all of a sudden making really great TV shows. Yeah, and it was also like we were. It was like Sam, our creator, was like predicting the future in such a like freaky way. Like we had to move our finale because that morning, like someone got shot on TV, and like that's what happened in the finale. <laughs> and it was just like so wild. So. It's it awesome. pretty crazy, though. Uh, to close the loop on the good wife thing, I looked it up. It's actually the whole show. I remember it now. The whole episode is about Bitcoin. It's called like Bitcoin for Dummies, and it's about uncovering who Satoshi is. Uh, aired in 2012. And yeah. the guy, what's his face from American Pie? I hate, I know, I, I'm not, shouldn't say it that way. Jason? That Jason it? Biggs? Yeah, Jason Bates. He's uh, her client. Yeah, he's her client in the show, accused of being Satoshi, being followed by like Treasury, US Treasury agents or something. And they go to a crypto conference and discover that it's three people. I, I remember this vaguely now. Uh, but yeah, it's like the whole episode. Wait, so they just up. made some shit up? They just was like, Satoshi's three people, we'll go with that? I think so. Yeah, it like left it hanging. I remember. I remember. Wow, imagine Craig, Craig Wright watching this seething like that's this. how he, that's yeah. where <laughs> Craig Wright Me came too. out with this. He's like, <laughs> yeah, he's like, wait a second. Just saying, just saying. That's uh, anyway. Cl closing the loop on that. That's that's Bitcoin on TV, and it was like a big feature. It wasn't a passing reference. Like people freaked out when that happened, and uh, billions and some others. Like they talk about their hardware wallet for like two seconds. It was the whole episode about it. Long time ago. Beautiful. I I would love to know where this ranks on your favorite TV shows of all time, mate. Me? Yeah. Not You've brought it up a few times now. That's all. This is the first episode I've ever mentioned The Good Wife. <laughs> Are you being paid to advertise The Good Wife? Yeah. <laughs> Shill, shilling Good Wife now? Yeah, uh, that's right. It's, uh, got a secret contract to sh uh, shill TV shows that went off the air years ago. <laughs> uh, Bryce, how did you find the the uh, level of reality of hacking in Mr. Robot? Uh highly accurate i think the guy who consulted that show was mark rogers um and he's the or he might have been one of several but uh he's actually the head goon at defcon the hacker convention uh that's the annual hacker convention and stuff um 
and uh, I think he's still at Cloudflare, but um, yeah, like that was one of the cool things that the hacker subculture really latched on to Mr. Robot uh, because, um, you know, generally in shows, hacking is always kind of stupidly done um, or, you know, embellished. Yeah, yeah, the double keyboard hack. Transparent uh, monitor. Was, yeah, exactly. <laughs> All the tropes, but um, yeah, Mr. Robot like really was able to walk that line and have intense, cool drama, but also sort of keep the a lot of realistic um, scenarios and uh, like they use the right programs to do the right things and stuff. So it was, it was a treat for the hacker community as well. I only made it through the first season. Um, not wife and kids. I have the same uh, kind of affliction that Jordan does, the ADHD uh, read the <laughs> Wikipedia thing. So I don't fall behind in uh, in the water cooler conversations. But yeah, uh, yeah. Like I said, I, I really enjoyed the show um, when I you watched. Gotta, you gotta do it, man. Season four is like it, like it's like season one, but like dialed up to. It's so good. I'll I'll catch I'm gonna, up. I'm gonna stop shilling the show, but like honestly, you should do it. The payoff for season four is gigantic. Um. For anyone that doesn't know, did you go to like jail, Bryce, or did you? Were you too young? I was too young. Yeah, but so, uh, yeah, Br- Bryce hacked like NASA, the government, Google, <laughs> Yahoo. How old were you? I was seventeen when a lot of that went down. Yeah, oh, that, so you were close to going to jail. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I, I knew I was. I knew that was on the horizon, so I had to uh, make sure I got it all in before I reached the age of majority. But um, <laughs> yeah, how did it? Um, how did it play out? For- what do you say, Kai? Can you tell me what did you do? Yeah, I just like I was uh, basically doing like web graffiti. Like I was just uh, replacing home pages, um, like uh, of companies and government agencies, with my stuff. And I was I was low, like nothing. I wasn't trying to find the nuclear secrets or anything. It was just kind of bored. <laughs> but it was the the my whole purpose was is that like I was emailing webmasters and stuff like hey your site's insecure and like nothing was getting done about it so i just started um hacking them and uh like i was big on the whole like if i am a 17 year old kid like smoking weed and like you know skipping school and shit like if i if i can hack these systems then like lord knows what a state actor could do and i think now you know whatever 20 years later the world's kind of catching up to that where they're starting to recognize that you know again that there's just really i mean everything's way more online now than it was but uh but yeah that mentality um is something that i've always like espoused is that you know people need to take this type of stuff seriously um how did you know how to do that uh i got involved in computers super young um that my those that like took apart a computer when you were like seven and put it back together yeah younger than that i was like i that's <laughs> i was just super nerdy uh i computer was my best friend i didn't really have like a whole lot of uh yeah social skills or anything like that probably still don't but um realistically yeah it was just that i just i was molded by by the gibson like just just hacking computers. <laughs> Uh, so really everything aligned for you for like nerdiness to become cool again oh completely and i mean that's like a lot of the the music stuff that i i I did now is sort of dated because even like when i was kind of coming out with it i think that being a nerd still wasn't cool but now if you're an app developer in middle school like you're you're a jock practically like what a jock was the uh the world is kind of caught up to this whole like uh like the technological revolution but a lot of the I would say the hardships or whatever that I suffered, it's kind of like, I mean, there's a little bit of bitterness in a sense where I understand, like, there's a lot of people that make backs money on the backs of engineers. I mean, a lot of the finance bros and stuff in crypto that don't understand the underlying technology and they're just looking at the money, like they're basically, um, you know, making money on Vitalik's back type thing uh, when you know, they would have shoved him in a locker uh, <laughs> when they, when they met him. So yeah, the nerds just run the world. And so that's, people just got to deal with that shit now. When you were uh, describing your hacking activities, you, you, you presented it in a way where you're like, you know, I was uh, emailing the webmaster. I was doing, doing good. Didn't you add a, add a weed store to the Colorado uh, state website? <laughs> uh, no, I didn't do that. Uh, Are you sure, mate? <laughs> I, I mean, maybe I did. I don't like that was forever ago like i i (laughs) the i had like seven agencies investigating me at the same time um so cool like you're the coolest person (laughs) Uh, like i want 
seven agencies investigating me at the same time because I'm like hacking all of them. Uh, that's it's I don't know. Like it, this was pre 9-11 too. So it's a little climate was a little different. Um, I wouldn't say that I kept my nose clean after that uh, so much, but um, you just don't fuck with the government. They have like infinite amount of resources that they can uh, they can hit you with and stuff. And uh, but yeah, it, it was can't find the capital rioters not to get political but yeah so like, what's your favorite like childhood hacking movie inspiration media uh it was probably war games um and that took one. i grew up in colorado springs uh and so norad um cheyenne mountain was there and like that was like a big thing in the movie as well but uh there was this thing back then called war dialing uh which is where um, it's kind of like a net scanner or whatever, but it would just take phone numbers like 555, 1000, 1001, 1002, 1003, and it would just call them. And uh, there was a program called Tone Loc, Tone, it was Tone Locator, and it would look for fax machines and BBSs and stuff. Um, but Colorado Springs was actually the first city to make that illegal, like across the United States. So uh, because there's, there's a lot of sensitive government stuff, um, they were still kind of attached to phone lines and everything back then. Um, at least that's my assumption, but yeah, that those, the war games, I would say was probably like the, the, the one that I really was fascinated with. So Carly, I have a question about, um, being an actor and like being known so much for something like you've been in a bunch of stuff, but like how much did the landscape change with like such a big hit, um, in terms of, name recognition, street recognition, being called Darlene instead of your actual name, like things like that. <laughs> well, Darlene's like the coolest person ever. So I'm totally fine with that. <laughs> um, and because she also has become like my alter ego. So, so Darlene like, is like your Kobe. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Even though I'm like in real life, I'm such a loser. So <laughs> I'm like, everyone's going to be so disappointed. Um, but I like to think that I'm also her, but it's what the coolest part about it, you know, it's like when it's different when the show is like on air versus not, but I think the coolest part about that was the amount of people that would come up to me and was like, Mr. Robot like saved my life and just like their mental illness and how it was the first time they felt represented and how, you know, just to see themselves like reflected back on TV as in Elliot. And so that to me was like, you know, cause it's like when you make TV and movies you obviously hope to have an impact but it's like, you're not a brain surgeon. Like you're really you're just there to like entertain people basically. But then to be a part of something that actually had such a big emotional impact on people um, is like the most rewarding thing ever about it. And just, you know, we were all really passionate about it. So then to have other people feel that same way was, you know, there can't be any better reward than to have someone appreciate like something that you care about and are making. Um, but I'm pretty like low key person so i'll say when that show was out like i got a lot more how do i get into hacking questions and stuff and so they're like even <laughs> yeah. if you like but that's the thing is that one out of every hundred of those people probably now has a successful career in the field that you inspired and it's like that's that's a really cool like crown to wear and stuff is that you know because a lot of times you know again you don't you think as an actress you know, you wouldn't inspire, you know, someone's life choices or whatever. But um, I, I know it was huge for like women in STEM and uh, getting like, uh, just more like just involvement in computer security in general. So uh, sure. I think I yeah, I've had a lot of people tell me that it's gotten them into it. And I, I didn't realize like, I remember at the Golden Globes was the first time um, like a reporter was like, how does it feel to play a female hacker? And I, until then, had not connected or even thought about the fact that that's what I was doing and how there aren't any. And I think I was kind of like, also, and like, she's, Darlene's so cool. Like, she's not like a nerd, you know, like antisocial person in their basement. She's like a cool girl who's like 
fucking badass and so smart. So I feel like to be able to play or to like be one of the first like female hackers, like, and like representing all of that and just, you know, talking at different like tech places and, um, it was there, we have had so many people that have been like, I want to get into this field now. So it's really cool. I say this in a, I had your IMDB up type of way, but is tomorrow your birthday? (laughs) <laughs> this one, this was it. Like I was stalking the internet. Tomorrow's your birthday. Tomorrow's my birthday. Congratulations! Happy birthday, spam in the chat. Happy birthday. Yeah. Also, I think we need to integrate this. So, uh, Carly YT, we uh, have a, a thing where we give away two thousand dollars on the air, um, and our guests actually choose how to give away the two thousand dollars. So we need you thinking of an idea. For how we can give away two thousand dollars to listeners. I have an oh. idea. Give okay. you t- whoever, take a- whoever bids on my NFT. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I reckon that I reckon I reckon it should be the best happy birthday video. Yes. Like a video with like singing happy birthday, like some um, happy birthday video that sent sent in. Uh, okay. Just I love I like. I think it's I think it's great when people embarrass themselves online and which yeah, we've, we've done plenty that. of it. <laughs> As an example, uh one week people suplexed their moms uh for a thousand dollars. So people will sing happy birthday for a thousand dollars. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah, but but maybe not just like singing happy birthday, like maybe you need to write those happy birthday songs. Oh uh, like, like a, your own. Yeah, like your own happy yeah, birthday song. You get song. to pick the winner. So it's like creativity is plus points for you is what you're saying. Totally. Like, I don't want just, like, the happy birthday. To, it's like I can sing that to myself. <laughs> I, mean, I want to make it All right, so to win the one of the $2,000, you have to send a happy birthday video. Who are we tagging, Ledger? Uh, we're tagging Up Only TV and uh, Blockfolio and Carly. Cool. So you send in happy birthday video, and uh, Bryce and Carly will pick one of the winners uh, each. Um Carly, I wanted to ask before we chat about the NFT, I wanted to ask, what was it like when it ended? Like, I'm like, I really, really, really interested in like, you do this show, it takes, I don't know how many years, like five, four years. And then you know that it's coming to an end, you know, when the the, like show date is, and I guess you feel like you're really close to these people. It's, well, I'll talk to them all the time anyway. And then it's over. Like this part of your life just ends. What happens? It's really fucked up. It's like... (laughs) Because it's like, hey, make this your life. Like these people become like your family. This is your entire world centers around this. And then it's like, okay, bye. And you're just like, wait, what? And you, and it's really, it's really hard. Um, Because then you're also, it's like, you're losing, you know, like your character. And it's weird to think like, I'm never going to put on her outfit again. And I'm never going to like be her again. And I'm never going to be able to do this again. And it feels, it does feel like a huge loss. Um, And then it also is like, especially as an actor, like working with all the people that I did and Sam and the writing and the material, you're just like, cool, the bar is set so high now. How, where do you go from here? Um, but it's like, it's really sad and it's weird. And the last season I would say to everyone, I'm like, you guys, this is our last time doing this. Like, let's all take advantage of like being here and doing it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a very sad, weird thing. It's like everybody, it's like a death. <laughs> to be totally really? dramatic about it. <laughs> and, but yeah, and then, it's a weird thing. And then how did you like make the transition into acting because we chatted a bit before and before acting you were doing uh, a, a lot of art um and you you tweeted about um the things earlier and i think that's how i baited you to come on the show you said the first thing i did was this and i was like the third thing you did was come on this show <laughs> um, <laughs> like how did you um how did you yeah you can't see it because i'm shadow banned that thing there where it says this tweet is unavailable that that's my you. reply <laughs> <laughs> i'm shadow banned from twitter god damn it jack um but uh, <laughs> yeah how did you uh get into uh acting and how have you like sustained the art alongside it i 
knew I wanted to be an actor when I was like 12 after I did this this play where I had one line at sleepaway camp and I like brought some in water and I was like this is what I want to do for the rest of my life and I don't know why but I just knew it I didn't do anything about it I played sports um and then when I turned 18 I was like okay I should probably do something about this and I told my dad I was like I'm not gonna go to college I'm gonna be an actor and he was like I'm gonna go kill myself this is like the worst <laughs> yeah. thing ever with my daughter because my dad's like a doctor but I grew up in LA but so he was just like so he said I'll give you a year and if you don't get a job then like you need to go to college and you need to get like a real job so I was like, okay, because I just knew this was what I was supposed to do. And I think like a week or two before that year was up, I booked my first movie, which was the last song um, with Miley Cyrus. Uh, and then it just kind of, you know, I did Suburgatory, which was like the first show that I had tested for. And then Mr. Robot, which they didn't want to see me they like refused to see me for it for actually for a while because on Suburgatory I had like platinum blonde hair and the spray tan and was like a Barbie. Um, and Sam was like, this is not what we're going for. But so that's kind of, you know, how I got into it, but painting, I've always been a painter. Um, and I started really getting into that, like when I was 16 or 17, uh, I have an art studio at my house and in New York, like I'd have like an art studio nook, but that was always, uh, that was always like a must anywhere I go is to have that space to paint. And yeah. And then season two, I was like, I want to do a painting of the mask of our, uh, the robot mask. And then they were like, yeah, let's do it. And then we'll like put it on shirts and bags and this and that and sold them and that was also like the coolest thing ever and i have a so that was from like my painting that i did yeah oh, Bryce has got the mask. <laughs> yes that's amazing Bryce, you wear that sometimes when you're hacking <laughs> oh, yeah getting the it's my my mode of method acting it helps me get into the role um <laughs> put that on to start harassing people uh, Le Ledger, I just sent you a link in the in the call um, call chat, and it um, uh, it's it's a bunch of Carly's uh, work from I don't know when it's from like I don't know when uh, this began, but are like these things for sale? Have you have you sold them to? Are they already sold? Um, I have. I some of them are. I think on my website it says like which ones are sold. Which also it's like I made my own website. Um, but, no big deal. Yeah, you you have uh, you, you are you all are the alter ego. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I had a art show like two years ago. Oh my god! Now it's three years. Twenty twenty didn't count though, so whatever. Um, <laughs> like three years ago, and they the New York Times did like a thing on it, which was also like the coolest thing ever. And someone actually bought one of my paintings after like seeing me and that and on my website, but I sold a few at the show and then, um, yeah, I sold like a handful, which is cool. And I, I saw you tweet, um, a bunch about NFTs, maybe like October, uh, October last year, maybe September. I don't really remember when. And I think you were chatting to, um, nifty gateway back then as well. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, and now you've put your first NFT online today, yesterday. Yesterday, I got drunk and <laughs> I was like going to do a whole like at midnight or like make a thing of it. And then I got drunk at dinner and came home and was like, "Fuck it, I'm just going to post it right now." So. Are you uh, are you ready to be cancelled for ruining the environment? Totally. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so you have your, uh, your first one out and it's part of a, a series that like sort of, uh, pays respect to Darlene as a character. Can you tell us a bit about it? Yeah. So this one I wanted to do, you know, in my actual, actually in my crypto Carly text was when all of the guys were like, you need to do an NFT. Um, it's like 
the perfect combination for you as like an actual artist and then just like in the crypto world and technology and whatever. So I was talking to Nifty Gateway, but I, and I wanted to do my painting of the robot mask, something with that, and then realized that was like totally illegal. So, <laughs> so then I was like, I don't know what to do. Um, and now, uh, then when I figured it out, I tried to reach out back to them and degaff. They don't give a fuck. So, <laughs> um, but I was like, I wanted to do some sort of tribute to Darlene. Um, and with like my heart sunglasses and, since I'm also a writer, I found when I first started the show, I wrote like this whole thing about my character as Darlene and about her and like who she is and just stuff like that. And so I thought it would be cool to incorporate that into it since people started incorporating music into NFT. So I was like, why not? Why can't I incorporate like start incorporating writing into it? Um, but obviously didn't want to be that straightforward. So it's all like written out in binary code, but you have to de decrypt it to know what it says. Bryce, can you, can you do it with your mind right now? <laughs> can you? Good question. Could you, you have done that, could you you done do that 10 years ago? You can do it with pencil and paper, but uh, <laughs> everyone head. can do it with pencil and paper, mate. Yeah. I want to see it with your mind. No, I um, wouldn't. As our resident smoothest brain, I wouldn't be able to do it with pencil and paper. <laughs> Uh, so when is the rest of the series coming out? What's the plan? Well, so the first one just came out last night and this one is kind of, this one isn't from, um, the writing that's like, there's three coming out that are each part of it. Um, part of what I wrote. So if you can get all three, you can see most of it, but this one is just more of a cool one. You can find out what it says. Um, I don't know when those are coming out. They're ready to go, but we'll see how excited people are. So when and you then do you have any um, any plans to do uh, your like physical art and digitize it? Um, is there any way of like attaching the real to the to the digital? Yeah, I definitely want to do that. You know, it's hard as someone actually in the UK had reached out to me to buy a painting and trying to ship a, all my paintings are really big and trying to ship a painting from like California to there was like a crazy process. And I'm like pretty fucking lazy, but <laughs> I definitely would go through all, all of it um, to do it. But I, that is something I would love to do uh, and have the highest bidder get the real thing also. I'm, I'm almost certain there must be a site where you can just like say, pick this thing up and deal with it. They must be, it's like 2021. You would think. <laughs> also, no I think it's exist. expensive and the guy, you know, it has, it's like almost a thousand dollars or something. Yeah, fair, fair enough. I, I, I imagine that's probably true. Um, and I'm like, I bought some, uh, I bought some art from Australia um, and it got delivered to my house. It's completely destroyed. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck is this? It's like, on mm. a campus? Maybe I shouldn't have like paid for the budget, like shipping. Maybe I should have like paid. Like... <laughs> Spring for the insurance. Yeah. Did they not um, wrap it well? Uh, it was just fucked. It was like bent and fucked. Um, but can I can I like I sell it to like I can give it to charity, mark up the price, give it to charity, and deduct it from taxes or something. There you maybe. go. I don't know. Because um, charity wants a botched piece of artwork. <laughs> well, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Like. <laughs> I, I have a completely different opinion of NFTs uh, than than most do. I would you would they're think ruining the world. not that they're ruining the world. I think that like there's that it's masquerading like as this movement, and I just it's so fake. Like a, a lot of it is, and I and I, I I'm on Clubhouse. I don't know if you are using Clubhouse at all. It's pretty oh, much you got an invite, mate. You don't. I I'll give you an invite, invite Kobe. Every every like room on there is just a bunch of circle jerking artists and stuff. And the, the part of like where like there's a lot of things like the art world has largely been used to launder money like uh, throughout history. Like it's a lot easier to take like a million dollar painting than it is a million in cash like uh, overseas. Obviously, if you're shipping it with insurance and stuff like that. But um, <laughs> 
like the, the, I mean, the, the real trick to NFTs is like things like wash sales. Like if you know somebody with a bunch of Ethereum, you can just have them buy your painting uh, for a thousand ETH and then you can just send it back to them like uh, on another chain transaction. But now your painting is like, has that inflated value. So I think there's a lot of wash trading going on. And also some of like what Kobe was saying that like, if you came out with like, let's say five NFTs and you can establish that the price of one of them is $50,000, you can take the other four, donate those to charity, and now you have a two hundred thousand dollar write off for your taxes. So, like, there's these weird little like edge case things where I think that a lot of people like aren't really seeing. I think it's a neat idea, like as a chain of custody and provenance. And if you sell like a painting along with your NFT, like a physical good, then it it obviously serves as a certificate of authenticity, which is amazing. But that you know, like having like a lot of what the NFT space is now is just very like it's misunderstood and um it's it's not i don't know i don't think it's really good for the artist community as much as people say it is the yeah, environmental they, stuff different but yeah i think the environmental stuff is like kind of moot but it's interesting because um i as stuff goes through like huge hype bubbles um like nft is clearly in one now where you know it's sort of moved um at parts away from like actual artists selling nfts and there's like a lot of middlemen or um yeah. like you know um people doing like an nft drop and they've never been an artist they've just like collaborated with um with an artist uh, to do it it reminds me a lot of 2017 where like the ico bubble everything got like really frothy people were doing icos for flying cars people who weren't developers were doing um just like money raises basically but what is interesting is from that 2017 like i think suzu said on on the podcast like when people are really excited about something normally that excitement is like just and uh and and like real but people get really overexcited about it and like it turns into this big frothy bubble and then uh it gets like too excited too early um and i think for a lot of people it's sort of enabled them to have a market for their art and for a lot of people it's enabled like just cash grabs right like yeah, um, some grab, of the yeah. like, like collectible well. projects uh not naming any names um but <laughs> some of the collectible projects that maybe appear a little bit like hash masks but are misogynistic um just absolute uh absolute cash cash grab projects um that uh intended just to like extract ethereum from the um the ecosystem yeah. um what um what is interesting as well is i don't know if you saw the new i don't know if it's the aftf or faft afft um guidance but it's updated the um the like financial institution definition to include trading antiquities i don't know if that's the maybe just antiques i don't uh -huh. know um, so a lot, it's trying to combat basically that money laundering, uh, element. Um, yeah. I saw, I read a big thing earlier that said like, is AF, FATF, I don't even know what the like regulator is. FATF. Um, are they coming for, uh, are they coming for N the NFT market? Um, and then it's like, is there like, does how does that, how much does it address art slash digital art uh, and stuff like that? So I think it'll evolve quite a lot. I think um, everything in the art world is also a scam. Like I totally agree with like, you know, cause it's so, sub it's like someone's like, yep, this worth, this is worth a million dollars. Like yeah. and who the fuck are you to decide that it's like a blue dot <laughs> on a canvas? What are you talking right. about? You know, and it's like, it's all just a scam and it's pulled out of people's butts. Like what something is or isn't worth. And it's based on nothing other than like somebody saying it is. And so I think in like whatever form that art exists, that's always going to be the case. And I've seen some, and you know, and it's like the one that I made is like, it's not like, it, it's not like one of my actual paintings or like some like masterpiece, like it's more of something in like the digital coat, you know, that area. But for me, one, I was just like, yeah, this is a total scam. Like, let me jump on board. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I don't, that, that's, I don't be moan that at all. Like I said, I, that again, I, as you said, art, physical art has done this for a long time. Uh, one of the benefits of NFTs is that you basically can, you can continue to derive money as the creator of something. And like, you can actually take percentages. So depending on how you structure the smart contract, 
you know, you're able to basically every time the painting is resold, you get a little cut of that, which is, I think that puts a lot of more empowerment back in artists. I see in the music field, like there's a lot of like record companies now are positioning themselves to try to find a way to fuck the artist even more in a sense, like, uh, and, you know, extract more value out of them through these NFTs, um, not understanding that like it really empowers you. I mean, crypto in general empowers the individual um, as long as you're, you can accept the responsibility and the risk with it. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I, I don't bemoan people for taking advantage of this. It's just that it's more like the, the fringe communities and stuff. They're saying like, oh, we're changing the world and this is so amazing and stuff. But like, it's, it's just very uh, like the, the commoditization of it is, is like incorrectly. It's like placed in this like fake kind of guru spiritual uh, essential oil space. Um, so I just don't. <laughs> are you saying I, that you don't think the, the Winklevoss twins are in it for the art? Oh, no, uh, they are definitely <laughs> in it for the art. Absolutely. Um, that's their only reason. But what I would say, uh, Carly, is like if you did do like basically digital companions to physical art and sell those as NFTs, and then again, your NFT serves as a certificate of authenticity for the physical act, uh, for the physical piece, that's actually a really neat use case for NFTs, I think, because yeah. then you can prove it's not a print, you can prove it's for real. And so like, again, if you get into doing that type of stuff, I think that like more people will respond to that positively because again, there's, it's not just like, you know, ones and zeros on a blockchain, but you, you they can establish provenance of your physical art and what it's worth as well. I think for one me, of the- what really like drove me to it or like why, you know, my friends were even like, you should do this was, is one, you know, like I've said, art and being a painter always came first. And so many people don't know that about me. And especially when I tell them they're like, when I'm like, yeah, I'm a painter. They're like, oh, I'm sure you are. I'm like, your painting is amazing. Um, and so it was like a platform <laughs> to reach like an entire different community and world uh, and to like have my art in that space. But it was, it definitely, you know, it's like, I know Lindsay Lohan like put out an NFT and it's like, okay. Um, but it's the worst NFT I've ever seen. Ever. And it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> like for worst. that's obviously it was just like a money grab. But yeah, I definitely would want it. I think that it's just for me actually like another avenue to get into the art space in like a different format. Cause like I'm definitely not, I'm a painter. Like I'm not like a digital artist. It's been a lot of fun doing that, but like I'm not gonna pretend like I'm some like, you know. 3d digital digital person but that is something of like just doing it with my actual paintings just need to get them lazy i think it also i mean like what you put together it's more digitally native i think when my kids just died uh (laughs) (laughs) i think it's i think it's just it's more digitally native and i like that component like that's where i think i my one pushback uh to what you said bryce is like if if it's a piece that works digitally that wouldn't work very well physically i also like that i love the 110 yeah like the, the a, vr the vr artists that i see like that in the 3d space i don't know if you've seen some of yeah, those there's artists a, in Spain. yeah there's a woman that's doing a drop on april 2nd who i saw her stuff and she does it totally in vr and she's like inside the painting and she's doing it like the motions oh, yeah, are with nice. her hands and then she's like sculpting it it's unbelievable the one of, the one of the ship um, she's done a bunch of them, but she's doing a drop on, uh, on the second that looks amazing. And I think stuff like that is like uniquely digital, uh, or it's video and it's a, or it's a loop. And this is a way to create some degree of, um, ownership to the artist. So it doesn't end up on like Giphy and they, it's used millions of times and they have no stake in that. Like they just create and then they're done well, I mean, with a no value transfer. <laughs> Yeah, but the file itself is still just sitting on IPFS or some well, CDN sure. somewhere. It's not like you can't, yeah, like completely agree with you there though, that there are like spaces in digital art that have that um, that use case. But yeah, again, and, and Carly, like I, I'm not knocking you or your NFT at all. Like, it's just, if you started a clubhouse room and then started guru chanting about like how, you know, this is the evolution of art and you've, ch- you've done everything, changed the world, then like I may have words, but yeah, I mean, again, you know, you see it for what it is and, and like have an understanding of technology. So um, yeah, yeah, I don't. I think, 
I also think every there isn't anything in this world that is created that stays like genuine to what it is. Like everything has some like ulterior motive or like the section of it that's just like a scam or fucked up. Um, and I definitely, you know, and it's like I see some NFT. I saw one of like a girl eating an orange or something, and was like, "What's this?" <laughs> but um, yeah. it is like an interesting. Can you give me the link to that one? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna put on that, put on that one. Uh, so, um, but it like, is it a crazy thing now. But like, what's on the Twitch on the stream here? Like, that's not ever going to be created in the physical world, and yeah, like, there's value obviously to this sort of art, and that's incredible to me. So, like, creating a venue where that type of artist that's creating something that's digitally native can then sell it. And there's some sort of value that's assigned to them. That's, that's pretty cool. This is the one that I saw too. I think I saw her on Reddit, but it yeah. was like this really just intricate ship. It's just, it, this is insane. Like how this is done. I know the, uh, the guy We're that wanted to be... say it again. Yeah. It's on the, it's on the, it's on the Twitch. Oh, it's on the Twitch, but yeah, Carly, you actually, do you have a VR headset or no? Like an oculus or anything yeah. yeah uh i forgot i even forgot what the program is it's something paint or whatever but i you might find it really interesting uh, since you're talented uh <laughs> you do something with it uh me i just draw like little penises and stuff uh but yeah uh <laughs> that 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 that's like an amazing it's like i said you're just in this like your 3d space and you're just printing with br brushes yeah. tilt brush tilt brush that's what yeah that's what it is it kind of looks like if you were doing that, you'd feel really unwell. Here's the one yeah, with the, the ship. Right? So the yeah. So the I also for mine for the ones that I'm coming out with for Darlene for that it's more about like the writing too that I thought it was a cool way for people to like almost buy the words as opposed to like the image. Um, and so that I was like there. I feel like there's a whole other section to that part of it where it's like you're almost buying a story instead of like buying a book so for those like it's that's more of my angle than it is necessarily you buying a piece of artwork it's like you buying my words um and this like story and writing about that that i thought was like really special and so that was kind of like where carly have you ever met a uh, coin artist her name's marguerite um but she did some of the early crypto puzzles. Uh, oh yeah, you might really like to talk to her too because she puts uh, she t puts together artwork and then she puts puzzles inside of them and like it can be multi like a chain of different things happening and it's a great blend between the crypto and the art and you know you could include like writing components in it and it might be a, a neat way to kind of expand the series. Yeah, and Kobe saw one of them and he was like you're really gonna make everybody <laughs> try and decrypt <laughs> that because it's kind of long like, yeah. one of them is like one of them is incredibly long. long that's just bullying i think it's just me <laughs> <laughs> they're like all oh, these coders they love it <laughs> right yeah sure they do yeah 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 for sure like I well mean, it's there's a huge like there's a there's a whole thing in hacking uh these called capture the flag exercises i don't know if you probably were exposed yeah. to that at mr robot yeah but uh, yeah, a lot of like, they're just computer riddles basically, but it's just puzzles and stuff that you can kind of make an entire alternate reality game out of your art if you were so inclined. Um, see, yeah, again, there's the sky's the limit on it. I mean, it's art, so you can fart in a box and sell it if you want to, I mean. You can tape a banana to a wall. I felt like that was like the art yeah. top to me. It was, that was like, pinnacle, yeah, peak art. Yeah, 150K like, or whatever they got for duct taping a banana to a wall. That was another giveaway we did. We had people also put a banana somewhere and, you know, take a picture of that. So just as a reminder to the people sending Carly happy birthday videos, this, you know, the bar is high on the quality of art that we need. Yeah. No, can they reuse a banana in the, <laughs> in the happy birthday video? Yeah. In the happy birthday video. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, just, should, we, should we have a look at some of the entries? Uh, yeah. Why yeah. not? I can pull up the link. Um, you got me thinking of all about these like NFT uh, game theory and stuff though. So first of all, but while we while we pull to that, let's get uh, 
Carly's item here again. So this is the first of multiple, but this is a one of one, right? This isn't like yeah, they're yeah. all one of ones. Okay, so this and should... there's actually uh, I sang like sound over it where I'm saying the code. Okay, uh, I don't know if I have the sound. My browser might be trying to block the sound, but well, they can all go to it and listen. Yeah, everybody needs to go to it, listen, check it out. Uh, that needs this needs to be bit up first of all. Like that's on the current Pump NFT it. cycle. Pump it. Yeah. Um, and then we'll pull up some entries. H have we gotten a lot yet? I have about yeah. We got like thirty notifications. We have several. We have several here. We can watch some. Oh, Rob DeRock has sent one in. I oh, this guy. DeRock he's like stalking Kobe. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm getting the sound through. Hold on. <laughs> I love Rob's videos. <laughs> Hi Rob, how you doing? <laughs> was he wearing a Christmas hat in one of those in that video briefly? I don't know. Um, Bryce, do you interact much with crypto Twitter? Uh, fringe, kind of fringe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, a lot of like OGs like Craig Sellers and Bruce Fenton, Brock Pierce. Like, I mean. I don't know if they even are considered crypto Twitter. You mean, really. you mean presidential candidate Brock Pierce? Yeah, presidential <laughs> candidate Brock Pierce. Uh, yeah, like I said, that the 30 people in the coffee shop type things. A lot of, like I said, crypto uh, Twitter is the most entertaining, I think, um, uh, for sure, just to be a, a, uh, a observer, casual observer of. But I don't think I, I don't get in any flame wars over coins or anything like that. So. <laughs> Uh, Carly, what about you? Do you interact much, or is Kobe the 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 limit? Do you know who Loomdart is? Uh, no, I do not. Carly, Loomdart, are you a Loomdart follower? No. Mm. No, sorry, Loom. Loom follows uh, you. What about don't Sat worry. Satstar, do you know Satstar? <laughs> Satstar? Mm. No. You're like my expense. Is that one? Uh, uh, is it? I'm the gateway like drug. Infinitum or whatever. <laughs> is that? Uh, Ad infinitum. That's uh, Ad infinitum, isn't yeah. that Messi? Isn't that one of Messi's accounts? I thought that was one of Messi's accounts. What? What? Which Maybe one? Just dust, Ad infinitum. Dust. Yeah, that's Messi's like handle yeah. name. Honestly, all the crypt. It gives me why I don't is because I'm like, I didn't buy a thousand Bitcoin when it was seven dollars, <laughs> and you guys are all just talking about how much it's worth and going up, and it's like I get it, and then it just makes me feel like shit, and so I'm like, I can't do this so there's i mean there's this saying i hear it all the time this chinese proverb thing about like this the first best time to buy crypto is was 20 years ago the second best our first best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago second best time is now uh is the idiom and like realistically like i think getting into bitcoin uh at any time is actually a good thing like i mean re we just hit all-time highs like not too long ago uh uh, like crossing 60k and if you think about it everyone that held crypto up to that point has a profit so like that's like what the all-time high really is and so realistically like i think it's never too late to get into it um there's no boat that's been missed or anything so and if it's then when it was at like twenty thousand, i'm putting my uh oh i can't even do that when it was at like twenty thousand, i was like oh I'm just gonna like wait for it to drop, and then it like went up to fifty, and I was like, "Fuck me, this is so <laughs> annoying." <laughs> but like, there has to be a crash because so because you got to get in. That must come down because you need to get you in. Can't, you, you can't really time it though. That's the the whole thing is like you just have to look at like they always say zoom the chart out and stuff that you just have to think about it as a long term play that you know. Like I haven't, there's just crypto that's sitting in cold wallet that I haven't like is, is gathering dust. I've never touched it. It's just sitting there in a UTXO. So like uh, that just, if you have that type of mentality about it, like my kids are going to be the ones spending my crypto, not me. I don't, I have enough, I have enough regular money uh, that I don't have to worry about. Uh, nice flex, man. Yeah, flex. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, just like, um, PG forever. All right, I'm looking for a little adapter so that I can plug in my phone and get the sound on these things because lo and behold, we have something and I've run out of technology to deal with it. Uh, what, wait, what are you trying to do? I'm trying to screen the screen the entries for the happy birthday song. 
but I need that stupid little adapter. You can't adapter. listen to the audio. No. <laughs> I don't know. For some reason, my browser is like totally blocking the audio. I can't undo it. Uh, so I need one of those stupid dongles that goes from a 3.5 to a lightning. And I got it. Are you genuinely going to try and do this live? Look at that. Look at that. No, I'm going to plug my phone in and do it on my phone. All Look, right, I still cool. got tricks. I still got tricks. Don't worry. Improvise. This is the, this is the hacker credo right here. You're yeah. good. <laughs> Look, we won't have we won't necessarily have great video with them, but I'll try to line it up. And Brian, so are you just um, are you a Bitcoin maxi? Are you full Camp Vitalik? What's uh, no, I'm like I've always basically shilled Bitcoin and Ethereum, um, but I'm not necessarily a maximalist. Like I think that that it's just insane to me that basically Bitcoin as a technology, you know, has. It, even though it had first mover advantage and everything, it's still pretty much the standard. Uh, and like through all the, you know, forks and everything, it's still kind of maintained itself. Uh, but I do think it's more of a store of value than a transactional currency now. So uh, that's one, I mean, use case that, you know, I don't know if Lightning Network has really solved uh, necessarily, but uh, yeah, generally, like I was big on the EOS train, like uh, Dan Larimer, um, I think is another brilliant guy. Uh, the um like privacy coins like Monero, uh fluffy po ponies. Isn't uh, Dan about to do his seventh ICO? Uh probably. He's he's uh he's got his punch card. He's uh, the eighth one's gonna be free um at a certain <laughs> point. Uh, but yeah, that um like Steam was like in a, like one of those OG like to try to get the artists involved projects um that was uh kind of cool. again that just everybody I think has good intentions. So, well not everybody but most people do for the most part. But uh yeah, as far as like the advice I give to investors, it's usually just Bitcoin and Ethereum um, and Monero if you're buying drugs uh, now. But All right. uh, so I think this one's going to be good. I'm just winging it here. This is uh, the guy. I think he won the banana contest. So this is Ian. See if y'all can hear this. Can everyone see this? Do you hear it? birthday freestyle to release your inner child for a little while and smile and leave the whole crowd beguiled get loud for a while i hope you're feeling good today and every day in your whole life now just sway to the rhythm every way that you feel it i hope that you do it this that hip hop take it to the top don't stop coming straight off the top with zero planning uh and all the crowds they just keep demanding <laughs> All right, so that was Ian. Bryce, as a rapper, how would you rate? <laughs> <would you rap? laughs> I I will say uh, the use of the the pan flute or whatever was <laughs> probably the first time I've seen that in a in a in a rap song. He freestyles better than I do, I think, probably. So. Uh, oh, I felt that like deep in my chest. That that, that was. Yeah, so that funny. really affected you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if I can find the next one, it has a dog in it, so uh, I'll look Ooh, for dogs it. Dogs are good. Yeah. All right, here's the dog one. Hold on. That wasn't necessarily a non-fungible birthday uh, greeting, though. It had no mention of Carly. No, that's a good point. Yeah, so yeah, they, might uh, just, they might have just got that from the internet. The, the ERC twenty. No, no, no. I recognize. I recognize that guy. All right, y'all ready for this one? Hmm. Says how to write a birthday song. That's what his dog's typing. <laughs> so this is this is very bad. <laughs> it got better. It got better. Yeah, that's. Uh... Uh, so there's. Another entry. Oh, we I think we have a lot. Dog is kind of cheating though. I think that's. I, I don't know. So you want to call PETA and make sure that uh, that that was okay. We didn't violate any weird Wait, thing. There. I'm getting a sweatshirt. One second. The dog was so bad that she's gone. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, I'll do one more. Wait, I think she can still hear. You. Oh boy. <laughs> this one's gonna be very bad. I can already tell you. All right, here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to <laughs> you. All right, all right, all right, all right, I like that one. Sorry, that's out. Can we, can we see was, Rob? The, can we see Rob the rocks? Uh, yeah. That was a clear violation of the rules. Um, that sounded like the happy birthday song that I know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. All right, here he is. Sorry, I'm doing two places at once here. Hi, Kali. I wish you a very, very happy. <laughs> Hi, Kobe. Hi, Lecha. Don't think I've forgotten you didn't put up my Photoshop on stream last week. Watching you, scammers. Birthday. <laughs> Hi, Kali. <laughs> so he called us scammers. All right. Those are the entries I'm willing to go through now. Uh, y'all can, can. I can wait to watch all them. Yeah, y'all can keep looking. We can do the. We well, can pick one after the show. We don't normally do that, but there might be a lot of good stuff you need to get through. Sometimes, Absolutely. if we had waited, we would have gotten a better entry. So, I also think people need to bid on my NFT as a birthday present. That's a good point. Me. Yeah, bid this up. Oops. Um. All right, Kobe. What do you have next? You know, I never have a plan, mate. We've done zero preparation for any of these. The most preparation I did was um, for <laughs> Mark Cuban. I uh, read about why Mark Cuban was rich, and I didn't really feel like I got an answer from the internet. And then you booked him for the wrong day, so he didn't turn up. <laughs> but he is going to be here. Uh, so yeah. one of the things what, I thought what about... Day, what, day is he, what day is he coming on? He's coming on April 1st. <laughs> April 1st. Oh, great. That's good. That's uh, great. So, Carla, you made me think of this when you said, like, oh, you're an artist. How cute. Um, mm -hmm. And I felt like we should rate George Bush paintings because I feel like that's what everybody pretty much assumed when uh, when he decided to become an artist post-presidency. Have you all ever seen his work? It's actually not bad. Yeah, some of it's pretty interesting, but, like, the yeah. early ones are very funny to me. Um, and... I feel like we need to get a list of George Bush paintings and, and see how they see how they rank up. Let's do it. Also, shout out to Blue Flame. Blue Flame bid? Mm-hmm. Twice. Way to go, nice. Blue Flame. New favorite person. Yeah, see, this, so now we do the wash sale thing where we give him the thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Does George Bush have a uh, gallery? I should have looked him up other than I mean, he has, a, he has a presidential library. Uh, but I think that just that just holds the stuff that uh, during the presidency. So I don't know if he can like retroactively put paintings in there. Uh, I'll find so the gallery. Wait, did he become like a proper artist? I don't understand. I don't know anything about this. Yeah, like yeah. British. He, he just does his. Uh, he just that's what he does. His paints now. Still. Yeah, kind of like Jim Carrey. Like doesn't act anymore. Just paints. Like Bush had enough of bombing the third world. <laughs> I should laugh at that. Just, just the, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, dark humor. Dark humor. <clears throat> All right. Is Ledger uh, muted for anyone else? Um, I know you're back. You're back. Okay. You're back. All right. Show us, a, show us some George Bush shit then. Pick your favorite. But you need to show me the worst and the best. Uh, I don't know if this one's real. Apparently, this is Jenna Bush. Oh, oh this is up. of her son. Oh, my God. <laughs> it looks like a Chucky painting. That is so scary. Could you imagine if your dad was like, look, honey, I painted, I painted you. <laughs> You're like, thanks, Dad. Yeah. Oh my God. I had that happen one time. This dude, like, I was, I was after a show and I was doing autographs and he, like, gives me this it's like that Elon painting kind of that I was making around a little bit ago, but it was the, it, like, it didn't look like me at all, but I, how, what am I going to do? Like, am I going to, I'm not going to turn away a gift. So, uh, it's flattering, I would say, but at the same time that happened to Cristiano Ronaldo. Remember that statue? <laughs> that was really bad. Um, I get a lot of people on like Instagram and stuff that draw or paint me. Um, which is very flattering. And some of them are like 
so good. But then I've also seen ones where I'm like, you really think I look like that? Or like, <laughs> what's, <Yeah. in> here? <laughs> what's, what's your favorite thing to paint? Like, what do you, what do you prefer doing? Me? Um, yeah. You're like, no, the other person who paints here. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. I think I do. I just took um, my first like art class where it was like about portraits, but landscapes, not a big fan of because there's so like perspective is so hard, but I think it's just like whatever I feel like excited about, whether that's, it's like, I have one painting of like a banana peel actually um, oh. that, but I was just, had that in my head and was like really excited to paint banana peel but then i kind of just like painting everything that's do good you think that, um do you think that like or, or at least you can tell me your experience i don't know for like universally but um are you like born with it like if i pick up a paintbrush and i try and i'm bad does that mean i'm destined to be bad no because you should see i i mean i think some people I think there's some of it where you are naturally good. Um, like when I was in middle school, I had never really done anything and the art teacher put me in like the high school painting class, but that doesn't mean, it's like if you see my paintings from when I was like 16, they don't, they definitely don't look like my paintings now. So I think that there's some natural talent, but it's definitely something that you learn, but I guess, not everyone can learn it that well. So that's yeah, why like, George is I will still never, alive. I will never be good at music. Like I just don't have an ear for music. I don't have rhythm. I don't have anything musically inclined. Um, but I know, like some people, like they may have some natural inherent ability, and then they can learn because they learn start to learn music. I feel like it must be the same with art. Yeah, I think yeah. I guess you have to have some natural ability, and then learn from there um but i, I like the, the, the natural ability might just be like enjoyment so if you do something you suck at it and it was not fun then you ain't doing it again but if you suck and it was quite fun you like then you just get better and over time because you enjoy doing it yeah but no i don't think like everybody can like be picasso no no doing eight no. eight, eight snaps doesn't make you dead mouse like there's all kinds of but yeah, that's like what's crazy about art. And like you, um, Ryan was saying, just that like you can be like, there's many artistic pursuits you can take. It doesn't have to be music, doesn't have to be painting, you know, the writing, you know, all the, there's all sorts of things that I think, I mean, I think coding even like there's code that I've seen that's super elegant and beautiful. Um, and I think artistic in a way, uh, but that's, what's good about it. I suck at drawing. I can't do shit. So um, everybody I think, knows that. I think being a coder you're born with. I, I think there's an intuition. Yeah. Like there's some people, I think it's the same thing, like about like harvesting your talent and then like practicing it. Like there are some people that have just a natural inclination. Like I, said, I just really was fascinated with computers younger. So, but I, I know who knows what I've been doing 200 years ago, but like, <laughs> the, uh, I got, I just got extreme, extremely lucky in, in that regard. But there is, I think that code too, I think you can teach, you can teach anybody, but yeah, whether or not they're passionate about it, uh is a completely different story every single like hacker that i've talked to or know which is why i asked you like did you take apart a computer when you were seven and put it back together it's like when i was seven like i don't even think i knew what a computer was like i was not <laughs> i was like drawing i was right. not like interested in that but that's like a innate thing that like your piques your curiosity that it's not like you know feel like so many well, now it's like, so that's like where computer security, for instance, like, it, or actually just the computer guy in general, like, you know, used to, you know, my, my nephew is really good with computers. Like there's always that person that, you know, like come over, fix my router uh, or whatever, but there's people that, that are really good coders now that barely know how a computer works. Like they just, they know the software end of it, but they don't know the hardware end of it. There's a lot more specialization in these things now because people just go to college for it because they know that it's a, it's a good career path. Uh, so I'd say that now more than ever, there's people that are probably involved in computer security and in coding that don't give a shit about it. Like 
there's a joke where, you know, in an interview process, like interviewers will ask, like, what do you do on your free time? And if you don't answer coding, then they won't hire you. Um, but it's like, it's one of the only jobs where that's actually like a kind of a prerequisite in a sense where they want you to be passionate and like have that kind of, you know, you would be doing this on your free time anyway for fun. So we might as well pay you for it. Wait, you I saw um... that Putin painting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, chat, <laughs> the chat was trolling me about it because I had, I had Putin on in the background for like 10 minutes. Is that what George Bush did? Yeah, these are George Bush paintings. Uh, I'm going back to Putin because it's yeah, the funniest one. <laughs> did, he, did, he paint, did he paint the guy that threw the shoe at him? I don't know. This is a this is oh, a, yeah. uh, a an exhibit an exhibit of thirty world leaders that he painted. Uh, so he's no a wonder bit... there's a, no wonder there's tension. If someone painted me like that, I'd be pissed as well. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> that's like a uh, you know, low key diss. That's that's the type of thing I was talking about earlier. <clears throat> Frank, you said um you said there's people that are doing doing coding now that like don't know how a computer works. You know there are Ethereum smart contract auditors that have never even used a computer. Like they've never even seen code before. To oh, be yeah. a, a Ethereum smart contract auditor has the lowest bar of qualifications. You're just like, you just say you are one and you go, yeah, passed. <laughs> Give me $30,000. Yeah. I'll get it back to you in 20, 48 hours. <laughs> well, like Solidity is actually very interesting because it's, it's, it's not like uh, D apps in general, like coding them is actually a different mind frame because uh, most coding is very iterative. Like you can kind of just patch it later type thing, but um, that, that's one of the things about uh, you have to kind of work backwards when you're coding solidity. So there's people I know that are good solidity devs that are shitty regular, uh, like, you know, run of the mill Golang devs or something. Um, so there's, it, again, there's just so many facets of it. Now it's not like you can just be an expert at everything. You kind of have to specialize at some point. Well, um, someone in the chat, I mean, I do think coding is so creative and it's like what I was saying in the beginning about the turning off a light bulb. It's like most people would stop at like flip the light switch or like unplug it or take the light bulb out. But it's, you have to be creative to think about all those other ways that you can do it. Otherwise you're never going to get there. Oh, completely. Yeah. And I mean, well, that's in, in hacking. That's another thing too, is that if you're thinking adversarially, like you need to be able to, you know, as a, as a criminal myself, like it's a lot easier for me to, <laughs> to hurt other criminals or whatever. Uh, you get the catch me if you can vibe, but that, that I think is something that becomes intuition that you can't really teach, but uh, there's a lot of like firemen positions, I guess you could say, or fire people uh, in IT, for instance, where you're only doing something, you're responding to things that happen, like uh, that go wrong. So you don't necessarily have to be creative if you can follow a process. Uh, so even people that are very regimented and can't think outside the box, there's still a place in computers for them because they can just kind of follow an instruction manual, uh, which again, it's it's got its utility too. Um, I think that's just a really broad, there's a broad definition for how like to cr apply creativity, you know? Like some yeah, people are just rule followers, like you said, like whether they're, like they could manufacture something, but like they're not gonna design what's manufactured. And that's a very technical, physical thing versus what, you know, like if you're thinking about it in terms of code, and I don't know, maybe that does apply to like, uh, certainly applies to music. Like some people are a great performer or musician, but they're not ever going to be a songwriter, right? Right. Well, I think also with art, what you, what I have found is like compositions, like a huge part of art, which is like where things are placed and like the balance of it, et cetera. Um, and so I think that, and and like colors and the relationship between everything that's on the canvas. And I think that is something that you can be, that I was like naturally, that I would do and then not realize why it worked and but it like followed all the rules that I didn't know were rules. Um, so I think it's like a natural eye or natural ear for music. Okay, wait, I have a question though for you. And this is what I'd ask all of the tech people on robot. So, and like, where do you begin? Like, if you're like, okay, I'm gonna hack NASA's website. It's like, okay, then what? Like, what do you well, do? So like- NASA.com and go from there. First of all, no one's <laughs> actually go. hacking NASA.com. Please don't take us down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, it's the same, like, so it's part of like, hackers, 
by and large, I think are lazy in a sense, like we want to find like kind of the, the easiest way in, there's no sense in like, you know, picking a lock if the back window is open type thing. And the, a lot of, you know, software, you know, that people have coded or whatever, that there's just fundamental logic flaws in the way that some of it's done. And so it's a matter, it's just really like a trial and error type thing. Um, there's a little bit of recon that you can do um, sort of automated uh, but then it becomes, <clears throat> it comes to a point where like you're looking for different edge cases and you're trying to make the software or hardware behave in a way that it's not supposed to. So like it, it's something, that, again, you sort of just develop an, uh, an eye for uh, after a while. But like when I, like, the first system that I ever like really hacked was uh, this bulletin board um, that was uh, my, the public library. And uh, so bulletin boards for those of you uh, under... <laughs> 10 years old, whatever, uh, uh, like the, the, before the internet, like you used to, there's like local uh, numbers that you could just dial into and connect with your computer. And you were kind of interacting with people that were just local to you. Um, but I found out how to drop into a command shell uh, on my local library's uh, bulletin board service. So it's something that you could use to look up where books were, you know, what, who had what in stock, like all that type of stuff. But that un under that, uh, it was running a system five Unix and I was able to drop into a command shell and then make it, the system do whatever I wanted to. So um, like open your computer. Yeah, so like open your computer, then you're in there and then you're looking for like that. So for instance, like, uh, there's these things called oh my god uh, <laughs> uh, there are these uh things called buffers like where you know there's a certain allocated amount of memory that uh that a computer can store like a variable in and if you're able to like overwrite like the the buffer uh past its uh it where it's supposed to be terminated at then you can get the computer to do funny things and so um it's just it's how the application is supposed to behave and it's just like shortcuts in coding or logic errors or whatever you're just you're just basically poke at these things until you figure out like oh there's something that doesn't pass a smell test here and then that's where you sort of is a springboard sometimes it's the rabbit hole you'll go down it and there's nothing there it looks like it's something but it's not uh so that's going to be frustrating but realistically like you're just trying to push a system like outside of its normal operating parameters it's very much like the matrix uh in a sense most of the time right like and i'm just a web developer but in terms of trying to prevent security issues it's like uh when you have inputs on a website like where information can flow from a front end or a url into the database if that if those if those database uh storage containers are not tight enough like they allow a certain type of content you can just kind of squeeze your way in to do a lot more because there's other stuff stored on the database and you kind of go in through one that's a little too loosey-goosey and then it opens up the world and a lot of the like most straightforward type of hacking is done when when you can break into those inputs is that a stupid way of putting it or that's a perfect way of putting it yeah so like that yeah that there's so like if you're entering your name or let's say like a, a field is expecting you to enter in a number and instead you enter in letters like that. If there is not sanitization on that data, there might be a way to trigger the server to behave completely differently with the letters as opposed to numbers. And then you might be able to leverage that as part of a greater exploit chain to basically take control of the other computer uh, and do what you need to. So, and, and again, there's like, there's, fundamental things in hardware and software and it's an arms race like everyone's always trying to like uh outpace each other but all boats kind of rise in that tide like a lot of the problems it's it's crazy because a lot of the problems that existed 20 years ago still exist now uh but it has been largely minimized by you know the efforts of security personnel all over the world yeah. <laughs> we thank you for your service and yeah and usually like some developer just was lazy with the way they put something up and then like something that should have been pretty uh, straightforward all of a sudden opens up a lot more to the hacker that figured it out. That's just like SQL injections or like SQL injections or, you know, that's kind of a basic example, but you can do that to there's several. A, there's a guy things. actually in chat um, called his name is Zeal, his handle is ZLZ, but he actually released an NFT with an embedded uh, cross site scripting payload and he was able to take control of uh, uh, what was an open C. It was. Um, I can check. I forgot which one. Purple. It was. What was it? Yeah, I think so. 
Uh, da, 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 da. Trying to Didn't see. it like spam the anchor all over the screen? Yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was on um, da, da, da. someone said rareable. Yeah, rareable, rareable. Pardon? I say someone said rareable. In the yeah, rareable. Picture. So basically, what he did is he that there's these things called open graph tags that like, you know, when you like send somebody an iMessage, uh, it'll like a, a web page, it'll pre-populate with like a thumbnail and a description. Mm -hmm. So he basically was able to leverage the open graph tags to inject a JavaScript payload to be processed in the browser. And it wasn't, it's not filtered server side. So basically he was able to take control of your browser through viewing his NFT. Yeah, and so very cute. Uh, I forgot how much it fetched. I, I, it might even still be for sale, but uh, yeah, he uh, he's one of those guys that I, uh, very young. Um, I think he's twenty one now, but this guy is just super brilliant. He he took he just took uh, like a half million off Apple uh, through bug bounties and stuff. Um, him and the the crew he works with, they're just real sharp. But yeah, they're, there's they're websites just, for this like Hacker One, I think is Hacker what, One, yeah. Bug Crowd, uh, Zero Day Initiative. <laughs> Hackers are like the coolest people ever. And it's and that's why I say it's so weird that you say that because I say growing up, it was like not that cool. Everyone was like, right. you're fucking nerd, like blah, blah, blah. And so, they, but I say largely due in part to your show, actually, uh, that there's a lot more of it that's in the zeitgeist now. And, you know, again, people, you know, you, um, I, you, you made it cool, Carly. You're one of the, the people that helped uh, advance the field of computing and get guys like me laid. So uh, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I really went a different direction. Uh, so, Carly, is there like a Darlene spinoff, um, or is is the Mister Robot series got a future? Do you think, or is it let a I let wish. a good thing be? I wish. No, we. It's done, though. Um, you know, they wanted us to keep going, but Sam, who created it, was like from the beginning. He was like, "There is an end, and this is how it ends, and we're not going to make up." shit to just keep going because that's how shows die that's how they start sucking um, yeah. yeah die so uh he was like this is how it ends and this that's that um i think in the in today's climate there's a lot more reboots and like revisiting and stuff like that so you know you might be able to reprise the role of darlene in 20 years when we're flying in spaceships or right. something uh, <laughs> mr robot in space uh <laughs> But, yeah, he would never. Because he's also, it's like, if someone was like, here's a hundred million dollars to do it, he'd be like, I don't care. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm not doing that. So, which is great. And for like the integrity of the show, but it's also like sad for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And have you been typecast at all? Like in the people saying like, we want somebody like Darlene, but you know, we'll use a different name, but still you, you go be you in that character. Yeah. Luckily, I have not um been like right now i'm in the cayman islands doing a movie where i play someone that's like so different like i'm like a rich bitch that's like what and like where you know it's actually the polar opposite of darlene but that's what makes it so fun so i'm lucky that i haven't but she is like the coolest character so i'd be happy It'd be hard to play someone similar to her because the whole time I'd be like, you're just trying to be like, you're just trying to be Darlene and like, you're never going to be as cool. Um, but I'm always down to play like badass, strong women, which is like at the heart what she was. Yeah. I think that, well, I mean, that's the probably to the typecasting problem. I think like Kristen Stewart, actually, she's doing that Diana princess diana uh, movie or whatever but like the things like twilight like robert pattinson like hated that i think it happens to a lot of actors like where again you just get identified with a role like captain kirk i know william shatner like hates you know his associate with it famously or whatever but that i think that's a good thing that you, you know you said your first role was like the, a very barbie-ish character right is that yeah, yeah so then yeah so you've got to actually like the color spectrum i guess in your in your artistic endeavors which is yeah something, yeah some people probably don't get to do no, Didn't William really... Shatner recently tweet about Tron or something? Didn't he tweet like about Tron or Cardano or something in the future? Who did? William Shatner, I swear. 
Oh, uh, actually, so actually, I said he's actually kind of he's been in, in the, the crypto. crypto space. Yeah, like uh, I know Bruce talks to him um, sometimes. He was going to be a guest. We have this thing called a Satoshi Roundtable. It's basically like Davos for crypto nerds, um, where it's like Chatham House rules, like you know, no cameras, uh, but it, like it's like a crypto Illuminati meeting where we all kind of get together and decide what the next shitcoin is going to be. Size is going to be. Yeah, the block size. Uh, but yeah, that I think he, he was slated to be a speaker. Um, it might have been last year, like when everything was kind of going. going That's up. just made it sound so much more lame than it was set up to be. <laughs> it was like it's going to be a secret meeting of all the like crypto elite. And Will Shatner is going to come to a speech. <laughs> Keep down, Chris. Uh, one, one year was like Ron Paul and uh, uh, Friedman, um, Milton Friedman's son, um, the economist and stuff. So there's really interesting like discussions and stuff that go on there. Uh, but yeah, it's one of those, like, it's not as tainted with like, the, like the Miami crypto event is like 5,000 people. And it's just like, win moon, win moon, hodl, hodl, win moon. <laughs> and like, it's the most jerk off shit. So I can't even attend that shit anymore. Uh, Nick Carter from the Backstreet Boys is the latest one that I saw doing the, uh, the promoted oh, wow. tweets. Move over Bitcoin. Yeah, it's Cardano's turn. Cardano. That's not paid for. He's genuinely using the chain for something. I'm I sure. will say, just to go back to what we were saying too. Five minutes ago that if i am like forever known as darlene like i would be so fucking you know i'm like so proud of that That's that cool. like kristen stewart for twilight like i understand why she's like can you i don't want to be known as that yeah but yeah for me, it's like yeah sure i'll be known as like the coolest person that's ever lived on this planet <laughs> like yes please so i'm yeah. very lucky in that regard do you do conventions and stuff? Like, uh, do they make you come to hacker conventions? And I, I did, and it was like the coolest thing ever. Um, I went to like CES one year because um, they were doing like a home security thing. So they, uh, well, you haven't seen more than season one, so. Yeah, my bad. But season <laughs> you can ruin two, it for me. <laughs> no. Season two in the pen, I like hack, hack into this woman's smart home. So they had me come because it was this whole like home security thing. And then I've done like a few other like conventions, but I love doing that stuff. So if yeah. anyone wants me. Look, look Carly, <laughs> I, I do a lot of anime circuit stuff and I don't even watch anime, but it's like the, the hip hop I do is like in this realm called Nerdcore. So it just happens to have a lot of Venn diagram fans, but the conventions are really a lot of fun because people will dress up as Darlene and then you'd be like, oh yeah, and then sign my cosplay and stuff. So uh, yeah. yeah. We did, we did um oh Comic Con? God. Yeah, com thank you. Yeah. Um and that was we did it in New York and we did it in San Diego. And that was so crazy. Um people were like waiting for hours and it was there was like two thousand people, but all I wanted to do was walk down and like see everything and they wouldn't let us cause we like didn't have time, but that was really cool. But I oh. love seeing on Halloween, all the pictures of people dressed up as like Darlene and stuff. I think in, like I said, in maybe five, cause I know Breaking Bad and Sopranos, like there's all these like kind of shows, especially the quarantine, like people are rewatching re uh, so, like, again, it's one of those things that if it's in the zeitgeist and people really love Mr. Robot, like you can do that in perpetuity and just be Darlene for the rest of your life if you wanted yeah. to, uh, off, definitely, off blockchain. I definitely think it's, it's a show that's going to age really well, Oh um, yeah, which is great. So, I mean, it could, I could not be, I'm like, I also am like, oh my God, I hope I'm like not peeking in my, like, <laughs> when I'm 30, <laughs> but, yeah. But it is something that I forever will be so grateful that I got to be a part of. Yeah, it's going to be crazy, too, because there's so much, like, for the good shows, there's much more permanence now because you can go on and you can stream a good show forever. Like, right? And it's just always there. It's like, what are the top 50 shows that I need to watch? And, you know, Mr. Robot's going to be slapped up in the list somewhere with, and, like, 20 years from now, it'll still be, right. like, a great thing and it might become a period piece at some point it's like look at hacking in the you know like <laughs> it's, second it's decade it's, it's like black mirror type things like where i mean say mr robot was even kind of written like in the time i said that at least the season i said that i did watch i said it's like it's a surprising how accurate it was 
and then also like how enjoyable it was as, as TV. Um, probably because I see a lot of myself in Elliot, like, uh, you know, I, I love drugs, love. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's, uh, but there's, yeah, there's, and that, that archetype, like hacker archetype is very like relatable, you know, especially like now, even in, because even in the gamer culture, I think some of that overlaps and stuff. So it's, yeah, it's definitely just a, it's a cultural like piece, like a good snapshot of like what was going on in the hacking community uh, even. So I know that at least my fans and friends and stuff like that in the, in the, in the space, uh, enjoy it and probably show their kids and their kids, kids and stuff. But that is what's so great about streaming now is I still, oh, like, you know, all the time of people who are just watching it now for the first time or like discovering it, um, which, you know, obviously you could never do in the past, but. Yeah. Unless is. you had it like VHS, like you had a whole like wall of, uh, those were like big cassettes for the, 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 the youngins out there, but. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like when Titanic was on two separate VHSs. Yes, yes. <laughs> Wait, it was on two? It didn't fit on one? Yeah. No, yeah, that was... It was too big was of a epic. movie. Yeah. Long movie. Uh, Ledger, we've been streaming for like an hour and a half. Should we have uh, some questions from the chat? And then we need to pick winners for these uh, <laughs> embarrassing birthday videos. Oh <laughs> yeah, God, I, I, just, I, I just had one. I had to screen it. We have a second entry from Ian. This time using he's a gone, larger. He's gone back again because his first one didn't have Kylie's name in. Oh, uh, that's true. Maybe this one does, but this one uh, we got it. Let me see. I'll just turn the. I'm sound. pulling them up on my phone. All right, I'm gonna read some questions from the the chat while you're uh, having a look. Um, Kylie's thoughts on whether traditional cinema is dead. I hope not. That would be so sad. I think it's it scary because people are I think everything right now is becoming geared towards don't leave your house like <laughs> you don't need to go anywhere to do anything um and we'll like come to you in two minutes but I think that there's something like I've seen like jokes about how like in the future people are gonna be like yeah we used to like go to this a theater and sit with strangers and watch a movie um, and people are going to be like, what? But I think there's something so special about doing that and seeing it in that environment that I really hope it's not something that's going to die. But. So we don't know you hope not. AMC, um, uh, AMC stock. That's what everyone's investing in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully oh this doesn't appear in the SEC. <laughs> Do y'all see this one? What is this guy? <laughs> that was the guy that I was talking about. That was oh Ian. God. Oh my God. What instrument is that? <laughs> I don't know, but he's my favorite giveaway participant that we've had yet. <laughs> you uh, can't just keep winning them all. <laughs> I gotta just want he's, him to keep winning them all. He's gonna have to make a new yeah. Twitter account for his future entries. Maybe everyone else needs to step their game up. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Uh, can we ask Bryce about... Uh, White hat hacker life, um, bug bounty uh, stuff versus um, like corporate jobs working um, on like f like like defense teams for big companies. So like I was kind of semi retired, uh, and like I'd been like pretty entrepreneurial for most of my life, uh, but like I. I was the uh, head of security at Grinder for a while because um, they had uh, they had a lot of like safety and privacy concerns. Um, shout out Hardwood. Yeah, shout out Hardwood. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, that uh, like I really enjoy. Like I don't think not doing anything is good for me. Um, but uh, yeah, so, because of the like, drugs. Well, I, I don't actually, so I've been, like I said, been sober for a while now. I smoke okay. weed. That's pretty much it. So, uh, yeah. Um, but I would say that a lot of it, um, is just that like, so now I'm at Amazon, um, and I'm in the devices stuff. So deal with like the Alexas and, uh, rings and everything. And I, it's like How one of the, companies... for those? pardon? How safe are the Alexas? Uh, 
I can only speak I, like the security team that's working on all this stuff is some of the smartest people I've ever interacted with. So like uh, I have Alexa's like all throughout my house. Um, I have a ton of like ring devices uh, down there. It's Amazon stuff uh, like the interoperability of like everything, the smart home stuff. Like you were talking, there was a uh, there's a um, plot point in Mr. Robot about it that Amazon actually is one of the companies that takes privacy very seriously um, that they don't like mince words with any, like, it, even if something is like a user error, it goes to everybody and like investigate it. Um, so, I mean, everything is a work in progress. There's no such thing as hack proof and perfect, but uh, at the last Pwn to Own, the devices that we submitted, um, Pwn to Own is like a, it's kind of like a, a hackathon for uh, devices and stuff uh, where we give out cash prizes for people to find cool bugs and there wasn't anything found on uh, the new Alexa generation and, and one of our ring things. So that's generally a good sign because even with financial incentive, if people aren't finding things, then uh, it's a good sense of maturity of your product. But that I mean, because I like, it's like one of those change from within type things where I like to be a part of the products that I'm using and stuff. And I have ring cameras all throughout my spot and uh, Alexa's and stuff. So being part of the ecosystem of security, like it, it kind of forces you to make it better, you know, cause you're, you're a consumer too. But I mean, if this, if my grandma was using this stuff, like I wouldn't want her to be in any danger either. So, uh, but yeah, I said, Amazon actually like just from the inside, I can tell you they actually work really hard on uh, striking that balance between usability and privacy and stuff. Not to pry too much, but you mentioned, uh, doing nothing is not good for you. And uh, I relate to this all because like, you know, I've had periods of going like, you know what, I'm not gonna work anymore. Um, like, like, what's the point? Um, I'll just chill. Uh, but all I do is I end up playing League of Legends and I'm not progressing at all in my rank. Uh, so th then I get pissed <laughs> off about that. And then I just like, I just start, start sort of rotting away, not doing anything. My brain feels like it's getting foggier and slowing down. And then I've, gone through periods of like working on um certain stuff like uh and you know maybe the financial incentives um not great enough or it's not there but the process of building something and being part of like having a routine that i have to do uh like someone checks out i'm alive and stuff um is like helpful for me oh, yeah. um how have you found that and how has it like evolved over like last 10 15 years or whatever well, so yeah, like that's part of it is that like being on some somewhat of a regimented schedule, like, you know, but again, like part of not having, not being an entrepreneur type thing, I don't have to think about work 24 hours a day. So like I had like, and there are a lot of rumors about Amazon, like working people to the bone and stuff, but that, you know, realistically, like I can, I can still leave work at work type thing, which is what, where I'd have it if it was any differently. And I was remote, even whether COVID existed or not. So like my quality of life is kind of important, but a good thing about being like kind of in the hacker celebrity echelon or whatever is that it, like, I don't like, if I was having to like find a job <clears throat> or something, I'm sure it would be kind of stressful that I'm sort of, I've been drafted at pretty much every position that like I've played. So like that, you know, is, if the mission aligns and everything, it, it's good. Uh, but yeah, that I also like that I find that being on the bleeding edge of technology and, and being forced to work with it, like it keeps your brain sharp uh, and keeps Alzheimer's away and stuff. So that's the thing is I, I think if I took a year off and like, I didn't do anything and I just like backpacked Asia or something when I came back, I mean, who knows what the landscape would be, you know, and whether or not my skills are marketable, whether or not I'm still smart enough to hack it with these youngsters and shit. So yeah, realistically, like it's an, it's an exercise too, in, in kind of maintaining busyness and keeping the mind working. I had a, how about for you, Carly? Like in yeah. the downtime between filming and uh, making stuff, like what do you get up to? Do you just play video games and, and wait for the next one? Well, I had a freaking like almost a year and a half of zero work thanks to the pandemic. Um, luckily, I have so many hobbies. Uh, I have my art studio in my house. So I paint, um, I also write and was just working on writing a show. Um, believe it or not, I'm a big golfer. Nice. Ooh, nice. Are you a scratch golfer? That's my goal in life. Okay. Um, okay, what does that mean? It means you like shoot par. You shoot par. What does that mean? 
I mean, like right on the dot on the strokes. Like so there's a par three, drives. par four, par five. You're on a par four. It's supposed to take you four shots to get in the hole. It means you're the coolest person ever aside from a hacker. Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, but I do. So I try and keep myself busy, but there is, it's like same with acting, like nothing can take its place of like the feeling of being on set and working on that. Um, other things can fulfill me in different ways, but nothing can like that. So do you like the gig aspect of it? I was actually thinking about this recently because, um, the businesses that I'm part of are very much cyclical. Like you have to just have your weekly output. Um, and I'm kind of jealous of this gig idea, right? Like, you know, it's like, here's a fixed amount that I make for a season or for a, a film. Um, and then you can kind of carry on to the next thing. Is that freeing or is it stressful? <laughs> no, it's so stressful. It's freeing <laughs> when you're on a TV show um, because you know that that's coming. You know that you have that income. You know that you have that job. But when you're not, it's like you are working job to job and like don't know when the next time you're gonna get a job is. And as an actor, it's like, you always feel like you're never gonna get another job. Um, and it's hard cause you know, it's like, think about how many actors there are that are my age that are like, you know and only one person gets the role. So in between all that, like I go on you know, every, we go on so many auditions and there's so many things that you want that you don't get. Um, and then these things come out of nowhere, like this movie I'm doing right now, literally on a Wednesday night, I get a call being like, hey, you just got this movie. Um, you're leaving Monday for the Cayman Islands if you want to do it for six weeks. And I was like, what? <laughs> so it's like, it's so like everything can like change, you know, in a second. But it's very, so it is, it's stressful. Um, but definitely being on a show like that, you know, the money, money is much better in TV now than it is in movies. That's an so, amazing shift. Yeah, that's crazy shift, actually. That's nuts. Yeah. I mean, it kind of has always been, unless you're like Brad Pitt. Um, <laughs> but, you know, because you get paid per episode, so... We had 13, but other network shows have like 22 episodes. But so being on a show for a while, you kind of have some like, you know, something to fall back on, but it's definitely now not being on a show. It's like, you don't have a guaranteed thing that you're doing. So, so it makes it, I guess it makes it a lot harder to plan. Like, well, here's how much money I make <laughs> because Correct. they have no idea. No idea. Like you can, you know, go one. I mean, it's like last year, I like hardly, you know, it's like I didn't work and thank God that one, I'm like not, you know, good at saving money, but that I did have Mr. Robot and had the money for that. But yeah, um, you have to go through a, a, sh a TV show or a film, like, and whatever you make from that, essentially think, how could I retire with this money? <laughs> and not, and not. Standard. And, and do you what? Would, if you would have taken those Mr. Robot paychecks and put them in Bitcoin, like you'd, just be, uh, <laughs> you'd be metric um, MGM right now. Why don't you join my crypto Carly text and keep shaming me? Yeah, can we I'll, get in uh, that chat? <laughs> yeah, I'll give you my number. <laughs> um, Ledger, we need to give out the $2,000. It's time to look at the winners. How do you want to do it? Uh, Carly, did you look at them? On your phone yourself, because I could just pull up which one you liked better. The chat does not like me just playing through these randomly. Uh, and then Bryce, you had one too. I can I just let you guys proxy vote for me. I don't want to. Okay, so uh, Carly gets to pick two, or if you love one enough, you can pick one to one person. You're looking at Ian's. <laughs> I can hear it. <laughs> I'm gonna go look at some as well. Um. So Bryce, you're at Amazon now, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. Um. How do they? How do you think about like how corporations participate in open source software development, and how well do you think like the big like Fang type companies actually go about that? Um. 
fairly well, actually. Like there's, I mean, especially in security, there's been a lot of tools that have been open source. Netflix um, has like an entire uh, like monkey series uh, of that does like chaos engineering, does um, like uh, instance provisioning, like all sorts of like crazy um, stuff that they kind of had in their infrastructure that they've open sourced. Um, it's one of those things that, I mean, like Stallman obviously like has something bad to say about everything uh, that, you know, isn't open source, but yeah, I, I, I have a capitalist mentality so that anything that it's like Elon Musk getting involved in the space race is probably like one of the best things to ever happen to it. And, you know, yeah. it being privatized works and there's a lot of, uh, you know, in the open source community, I would say that definitely within the last 15 years or so, like it's morphed a lot more into a lot like where the participatory nature of like the companies in advancing software, it's not, it's not entirely altruistic. Like they have reasons for maintaining and keeping the software up, up to date as well. There's but that's incentive of, alignment. Yeah. yeah. And that's and so, crypto's helped open that up too. Um, in, in my mind, at least, have you gotten into the DeFi side of things and the, uh, very, the very little. Yeah. Like just Mimi stuff. But, uh, again, like that's, yeah, that's definitely another Avenue where, um, again, being a, a vanguard in that space, like might be somewhat dangerous and like there's, but there's a maturity to it. Like where, again, I think that still crypto is pretty much in its infancy. Um, I mean, I think that most people have heard about it now that, that own a TV or like the internet or something, uh, at least have heard the word Bitcoin. Uh, but that, yeah, like the, the, the use cases for, for blockchain, I still haven't, I think that there's still stuff that I haven't even thought of that no one's thought of that is going to be like kind of killer apps yeah. and not knowing what those are is, is interesting. But um, I know Microsoft is like heavily involved in uh, a lot of blockchain technology stuff now, which is cool. Um, uh, Amazon, I think there are some projects uh, that, uh, that institute blockchain, but nothing at scale. Um, I know that there's AWS offerings and stuff that, that um, will host like nodes and everything, but uh yeah i i don't know again like i'm i'm very big proponent of the technology uh and the democratization and like decentralization and all that stuff so if um if aws goes down doesn't the ethereum blockchain start working uh that might be a there may be a case to make there but i mean if amazon AWS goes down like most of the internet's down anyway so uh it's <laughs> the four alarm fire um but yeah, yeah that's, say what oh, you have a winner yeah Drum roll, please. Totally interrupt you. I'm so sorry. That was. Not so at all. No, I'm, just, I'm just filling time while you're uh, while you're judging. Um, Samuel Turpin. Samuel Turpin. I will find it. Underscore Sam Sum. Do you want to reply on Twitter and tell them? They might enjoy that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that way I'll see the notice. <laughs> they'll tell their mom. Yep. Frame the tweet. You're make it in there. <laughs> um, the lady in the robe and mask really freaked me out. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what was going to happen there. Turned out she was just dancing to someone else's song. And then I, I just think, I know this guy keeps winning, but like what, who else has an instrument like that? I know. <laughs> I mean, it's like how he pays for his giant, uh, you know, giant instruments. It's just winning uh, up only giveaways. That's good. He's, He's like, reinvest, reinvesting in this future. That's perfect. That's what we'd like to see around here. It's literally his, like his salary can just be turning up to the show and winning the <laughs> winning the week oh it's That's the nice. one it's the person that wrote theirs that was a nice one is there sound there's no sound right and then whoever just called me angelina jolie also wins <laughs> <laughs> it's this it's the uh hacker sisterhood there you go yeah <sighs> have you seen hackers carly I have it so long ago, but she's like my absolute, she's also one of the reasons why I wanted to be an actor. She's That's like my God. <laughs> That's para. <laughs> Wait, so this person wins with a, just a, uh, a, an eyeball comment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ian, Ian but, got cheated. Hold on, Parabolit. You got to do 
You, you did good. You win. But now tell her happy birthday because she just hooked you up with $1,000 for a nice compliment. Oh, great. Dude. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's the easiest thousand ever made right there. <laughs> Be nice. Didn't even say happy birthday. All it takes is a compliment, you know? That's right. <laughs> I reckon Ian got Ian got scammed. Uh, all right, Ledger, do you want to wrap it up? But before we go, I want to see what uh, Carly's auction uh, is at um, at the moment. Nowhere near good enough. <laughs> Damn greed, need before greed. Three, Carly, you don't. As long as you don't convert that right back into fiat. Yeah, don't like, don't beeple it. You know, like this yeah, is how you like get that. crypto. He took all that sixty five million. In all seriousness, I like can't believe anybody. I'm like so grateful for just like one person bidding on it. Makes me very happy. Well, Krill has the highest bid as of uh, 4.30 local time to me. Um, 3.1 ETH, five aka 5,000 US dollars. So I think we can do better. There's five hours and 17 minutes. Just go to uh, foundation.app. I'm going to do my best to get this episode out in time for that. <laughs> so, you know, um, what I like, what I like the best about the Beeple thing where he, everyone was surprised because he sold all his ETH that he made from his auctions was that he came on this show and said, yeah, I sold all the ETH that I made from my auctions. <laughs> and then, and then he did some more auctions and guess what? <laughs> he sold more ETH. Sold it all again. <laughs> Yeah, he came on here, though, and he had massive regrets because he sold it at, like, $600, and then it, he was like, then it went to 1200 and he would have, like, he, he had $3 million. Uh, okay, so should I keep it in Ethereum or put it to Bitcoin? Oh, that's a question for the chat. <laughs> yeah, that's a question. Yeah. If, we answer that, if, if we answer that, we'll get in trouble with one set of maximalists. Mm -hmm. but the, the chart? Uh, from, do y'all look at charts? <laughs> 50 50 yeah someone said 50 50 that's the safe answer that way yeah. you can't be wrong exactly do not do dogecoin do not do dogecoin <laughs> you don't believe dogecoin's going to a dollar uh i okay so you know how mcafee said that he would like eat, eat his testicles or something at a like yeah. Thing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah i like i can probably paste place that bet on doge like I, so you will eat your own <laughs> genitalia if Dogecoin reaches one dollar. Yeah, there you go. I'm on, on record. Show. Can you say it? So you can hold like, me to it. We need a voice get, signature. You're gonna get it to reach a dollar or whatever just by doing that. <laughs> I seriously doubt it. If I did, I would. It's moving heaven and earth. Like I'm capable of much more than eating. I I could get it. I could buy new testicles uh, or engineer them. <laughs> I don't even know what Doge is. Uh, so Doge is like it. That way. Yeah, it's an infinite supply meme coin that like Mark Cuban and Elon Musk and everybody are kind of hyping, but it's it is the absolute definition. Like most blockchain is, uh, the coins are um, scarce. There's a scarcity to them. I but was just gonna say, isn't an infinite supply the exact opposite of what makes something worth something? Exactly right. So it's that's the that's the point is that like it's basically that a lot of people are like using it. It's a it, people that are getting introduced to cryptocurrency that way. Like it's a fun and exciting way, but there's people that are betting the farm on it because they see like people like Elon and Mark Cuban talking about it so much, but realistically, like it's just not going to hold it, it, it. Mathematically, it just can't hold its value. There's like a million new ones issued every 15 minutes. So it's like, what is the, uh, wait, so what's the timeline for hitting a dollar in which you will uh, tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> that makes it less fun no yeah we yeah. can give it to the end of the year uh end of the one year. year from today one year from today one year yeah. from today it will not have hit a dollar which is a 20x its current value it would have to on on my chart if you look at it basically right here that's the one year timeline ethereum has an infinite supply well so the ethereum is actually moving to a different model to uh, a proof of stake model as opposed to proof of work. Uh, I don't know if we can get. And, and Ethereum is about to have a, a a change where they burn the base gas fee, so that yeah, the monetary model is actually going to become potentially deflationary. Where like even Bitcoin is not technically deflationary; it's disinflationary. So it gets less and less inflation over time, each happening. 
Whereas ETH, depending on usage, it could burn enough of the base fee to actually outpace issuance, and there could be, there could literally be less ETH every day based on network activity. So the that's going to change this summer, and I'm I'm quite bullish Ethereum to hit a certain level relative to Bitcoin, but like in the long long term, I'd feel safer with my money on Bitcoin if it, you told me I have to leave it somewhere for like twenty years. Nice. Yeah, I think that's probably right as well. Sensible, um, sensible humans in this chat. Jesus Christ, I forgot you guys existed. <laughs> that's how you survive reckon, for a few years. It's like you become relatively sensible. Yeah. You know, EIP one five five nine. I reckon could be the macro top for ETH. Um, no way. Because it's going to be such. As we get close to it, it's going to be such a hyped event. You know, if it, if EIP one five five nine had been active over the last few months, like billions annually would have been burned or something. Um, and you could just get to that point, like, that's it. It's the top. Like, the, the selling pressure from people selling is much larger than the billions um, uh, that would be burned annually slowly over time from network activity. Yeah. Um, that's how I'm thinking about it anyway. I think that we're, uh, I think that we're treating it like the happening where we don't really price it in very well. Um, and I, I actually think that once it sinks in that we're burning Ethereum and network activity is expected to increase by many multiples over the coming years, that it'll actually perform significantly better than it has been. Like relative to Bitcoin, it's not even hardly in a bull market, you know, like it's just been kind of a random walk. No real new highs since 2018, but like Ethereum has fundamentally improved I think at a faster pace than Bitcoin in that same oh, amount of time. Yeah, completely. Well, and that's the thing too, is it's like the network effect of like a lot of the NFTs being like done on that blockchain too. I mean, the more people using it, obviously the more value it becomes. It's like the whole, like if you, you know, the first telephone isn't worth shit, but like the moment two people have a telephone, it's, it becomes amazing because you can call somebody. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it helps. Uh, but, but again, like Ethereum too, like I said, a lot of the complaints against it, like about, you know, uh, maximum transactions and stuff like it, 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 everyone always benchmarks it. Like, can it replace a visa or a MasterCard? Uh, and I don't think that that's necessarily in its future. That's where you'll have some other probably race to, for the technology to get uh, up there. I mean, that's like something that EOS is trying to solve and stuff, but, um, short answer is yeah. If you 50, 50, it, you probably can't go wrong. Do you think Ethereum is going to get as big as Bitcoin eventually? I don't like it's 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 a different type of problem. Like one of the cool things about Ethereum is like we could start a business, for instance, and like, you know, how usually sometimes you have a partner that will run away with the money. And then like, you're like, oh, that guy <laughs> fucked me. Like you can basically have a robot be in charge of your company. And so like you can institute like a smart contract that does disbursements and um, allocations and requires like uh, majority voting and all that stuff. So in the governance sector, I think Ethereum has a lot more of a future uh, just because of it's like, it's, it's, it has mutable use cases too, but um, I don't think that it's going to replace Bitcoin as a value store. It's more of a utility currency. I've used the uh, comparison before. It's not original, but if you think of Bitcoin like gold, think of Ethereum like oil. Um, and that oil that's actually that's a really good one actually yeah, the oil ranges over time it but it also um as you have more things that consume oil the inherent value of oil does raise over time and it's hard to, harder to extract extract over time um or there's like costs environmental costs or whatever else so um i don't know that it has like without this policy change this policy change could make it significantly harder to extract because you're burning more than you're creating so therefore it might become even a better monetary component but it's very transactable right you it is created in order to spend in order to consume um whereas bitcoin is created in order to basically hold um now it, like it, yeah it's use case before i think was more ambitious but yeah, yeah, for sure. Until the Lightning Network really shows up and shows that it, payments are a real gateway, but like Bitcoin's scope is much more narrow, and ETH is much more of a wide scope uh, in terms of what people are, you know, what's designed to do on with it. Um, to answer your question, though, I would, uh, I I think just fifty fifty or like leave it in the ETH that you get 
Um, you know, selling an NFT is probably a taxable event at that U.S. dollar price. So if you're in a, if your sale, say it goes for 3.1 ETH, that's 3.1 ETH, but it's a $5,000 sale. Uh, the, so you'll be taxed on $5,000 of income. And then whatever ETH does after that is kind of a different thing. So if ETH is goes down by 50% and it becomes worth $2,500, you'll still owe 40% taxes on the $5,000, according to it's the not U.S. government. Like take out the money. No, it's based on uh, the U.S. government really screws you on this. So it's based on the fact that you sold it uh, at a relative valuation where ETH was $5,000. Mm -hmm. But actually, wait, but isn't it a taxable event when she converts it into fiat? No, because she received a monetary value for the oh, sale I guess, of an yeah, asset. Yeah. Ledger, is a, Ledger's actually an accountant. <laughs> yeah. Well, this like it's super complicated because like a lot of people think like, it's just the commodities thing like where if you hold it for longer than a year, it, like then it's subject to long-term capital gains tax or whatever. But that would make more sense actually. So you wouldn't get shit. I'm just saying the government doesn't double dip if like, I mean, they would love to. But yeah, uh, I think it, I think it I think there's a case like by default, they want to tax you in both scenarios, both on the origination of the funds and then the conversion when you make another uh, like trans, you know, turn it into something else. So like I think there I, I think people was smart for selling to USD because he's going to be taxed likely based on the US dollar value of what he did. Um, at the time of the sale. Or at the time of the sale. So if he sold something for uh, $60 million, you could make a case where if the market went down by two thirds, but he owed one third based on the USD value of that ETH at that time, like I think he'd have to go make a special case not to have to pay the taxes based on the origination dollar value. Yeah, but he could he could have still uh, only cashed out the, the amount yeah, thing the to cover the, the tax. Correct. That's what the, like RSUs are like that. Like RSUs, you can sell for taxes or whatever. Um, Why did he end up selling something for sixty million dollars? Cinema well, 4D, did, man. <laughs> in in his defense, the thing that sold for sixty nine mil was. Um, I think it was 50,000 days of work. He made one digital image every day for 5,000 days or something, not 50,000, that's ages, uh, for 5,000 days. Um, and then the, it was a collage of all of them. Yeah. He did the series called Every Days, where every day he made a It new was on average, it was about $14,000 per piece. Um, yeah. So it's as if daily he was paid $14,000 for his daily artwork. It must be nice. Yeah, that's still quite a lot. We have people, baby. Uh, Carly, we just got to get you up to that level. And start getting some precedents set here. Literally. You got to get your NFD, MC up. Come on, people. Well, I think we should probably leave it there. We've probably bored the last of our viewers with tax talk. And that's my <laughs> uh, Carly, can you shill your stuff one more time? My what? Shill your stuff. <laughs> your stuff. <laughs> foundation.app slash Carly Shaken. Uh, yes. That's where yes. the NFT lives. That's where you can bid on it, right? Hey, it's up to 3.5 ETH, 5,600 nice. taxable dollars. Uh, <laughs> and then um, your art is at carlyshakenart.com. And yes. there's a bio Later. and art the art there. Yeah. Follow on Twitter. You talk about NFTs on Twitter, same name. Yeah. Uh, Bryce, where do you want people to go? Uh, SoundCloud and Twitter, YT Cracker on SoundCloud, Real YT Cracker on Twitter, uh, or my emails rapper at gmail.com. You can email me there. Rapper that, at gmail.com. Yeah. There can be only one. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, well, Kelly, thanks so much for coming on. Um, hopefully we can come, you can come on chat, uh, again soon. Bryce, thanks so much, bro. Uh, hopefully we can hang out in real life again soon. Hopefully I think it's been like 10 years. It's been a minute, um, yeah. yeah. Um, everyone watching, oh, we need one more thing from each of you. We need some free alpha from the chat. Something that either helps people learn more about themselves, be a better version of themselves, or just make some money. Some life advice or something that they can uh, uh, just take away and do. Bryce, what have you got for them? What's the free alpha for the chat? What do they need to learn from you? Um... Man, uh, I don't know. Uh, 
each year once each once i asked this question and someone was like you need to get four hours of sleep per night <laughs> Vasily yeah. was like four hours for sleep per night at least i was like i think most people know that <laughs> actually so i'm in the i'm in the camp where i think that uh if you want to sleep all day you can too just make sure that you're not a piece of shit um so do something <laughs> do something worthwhile with your life for christ's sake that's, that's all i got for you do something worthwhile don't buy those <laughs> yeah carly what about you i would say my favorite thing that my mom ever taught me was she's always like why not you somebody has to do it so why not you i think is like such a good mentality mentality to have Someone oh, is gonna, someone's gonna 25x leverage and they're gonna hit it and it's gonna run for a million percent. Why not you? Why not, <laughs> Why not you? <laughs> Ledger, are the chat gonna make it? The chat's gonna make it. And you know what? This stream's gonna make it. Nothing here was so obnoxious <laughs> that we have to delete the entire show. Uh, we, last, last week, we just skipped an episode, mate. Yeah, I'm sorry. We didn't actually stream. We just skipped it. Yeah, we definitely did not delete it from the internet in every capacity because it was so offensive. Uh, <laughs> go to uponly.tv to catch the replay of this show and others. Thanks to Blockfolio. Go to uponly.tv slash Blockfolio. Make a trade today and track your portfolio just like you always have done and loved. Powered by FTX. Download it on the app stores today. Thanks for being here and thanks. I have forgotten every single week. Giovanni Pickle, shout out for the theme song, Mildly Stressful. Giovanni Pickle, originalist. Thanks for doing the song. Love you, bud. Later. <laughs>